I spent 1,000 days turning this island in the sky into this mega floating kingdom, packed with epic create mod factories, sophisticated farming, custom islands, and there's even a space program so we can explore the solar system and beyond. This is the entire journey from start to finish, all nine episodes stitched together in one easy to digest movie, so grab a cuppa, settle in, and whether you're studying, going to bed, or have your eyes glued to the screen, there's something for everyone. And if you do need to run off and do something else, you could always leave it running in the background, you know, it really does help the channel out. I mean, you don't have to, of course, but, you know, I'm just saying. If you could. Let's dive in. And dive in we have. Wow, look at this thing. This is an absolutely massive airship. Sadly, it's not our starting island, and we don't get access to any of these resources. I think to start, we need to go jump through this portal. So let's do that and pick our island. What do we want? Well, I think we're just going to go with a basic sky island. Let's jump in. Well, doesn't this place look lovely? So to kick this adventure off, the very first thing we need to do is take a little look at the questing book and quickly tick off a few things. You can have a quick read of that if you pause the video. But let's have a look at the getting started quest and figure out what our goals are for today. So I've had a look through. What we're going to do is we're going to punch some trees. We're going to punch the ground. We're going to sift the ground, we're going to automate sifting the ground, and then we're going to build ourselves a lovely house to live in. Which all in all sounds pretty good. I also seem to have some random stuff in my inventory from completing those starter quests, but that's not important right now. Let's get some trees punched. And the good news is it appears to have vein miner. We like. Oh my days, look at all this stuff. What is this? We seem to have a random array of berries. Okay, let's go stick them in a chest as well. Now we've got a bit of storage, let's get a whole bunch of wood and complete this first task. I've run out of bone meal. Oh no! We can't work. It's a sad day. Well, that should be enough wood to get us started. And we've also got plenty of axes in our hotbar to chop down the rest as they arrive. So I'd say that's definitely task one complete. For task two, we need to punch the ground. And there's a very good reason for that. Because if we if we crouch, is it crouch? Yes, there we go. Look at that. And doing that gives us infinite amounts of rocks and clumps of soil, which we can use to make dirt and cobble. Commence punching the ground. <laughs> Where did you come from? What in the world? I literally have zero explanation for this. I just have a random farmer villager. I'm going to get back to punching the ground because that's something I can actually understand. That should be more than enough ground punching to get us started. And now we have access to cobble and, of course, access to dirt, which, to be honest, we kind of had anyway. So that's task two complete. And that gets us some cobblestone and... What's Pet rock? Uh. What in the world is a pet rock? Is it a placeable thing? Oh, look at that! He's got a face! He doesn't look very happy though, does he? Oh dear, can I, can I interact with him? No, oh, I can punch him. I probably shouldn't do that. Things have got really strange in the last few minutes. And now there's a frog. So our next task is to smash up some cobble with a hammer and then sift the results. And for that, we're going to need to make a few things. First up, we're going to need a stone hammer or three. Then we smash the cobble into gravel, smash the gravel into sand, and smash the sand into dust. Beautiful. Now let's see if we can get a sifter set up. Ow, I'm on fire! Oh, hello, there's a loot bee. So I think this fella, if I follow him around, he should drop stuff for me. Are you gonna, are you gonna drop me anything? Go on, drop something for Beardy. Oh, come on. Stop holding out on me, bruh. I don't think he has any intention of giving me anything. Don't you dare drop it over the... Are you just... Oh, ooh, hello, what's this? Suspicious hat. Well, he's dropping stuff over the edge. Such a troll. What are you doing? Oh, we've got a bit of copper. We've got a pretty flower. we got a triangle. Okay. Is that is that it? Is that it? You throw half it off the edge and that's it? I do have a superstitious hat, though. Oh, my days, I look amazing. And what's this thing? A force gem? No idea. Just like that, we have our sifter done, and it's also rewarded us with a whole bunch more. So I've made up some more meshes as well. But it's also given us a bunch of wooden hoppers, so I guess we might as well link all of these up. That should do the trick. Now, should we sift some stuff? Oh, oh no, the frog. There's a frog stuck in me tree. Oh. Oh, it's too late. It's too you were in a bad place, froggy. That wasn't my fault. Oh, jeez. You didn't see anything, right? This hat is really not suitable for this situation. But now we've got this set up, I think we're ready to give it a go. And if we just do... Oh, my days. Look at that animation. How cool is that? Although, apparently, I removed the dirt from this one. So let's chuck that back in. There we go. Oh, that animation is so cool. Although it upsets me, it's out of time now. Oh, dear. 
What have I done? Turns out this is quite hungry work. I should probably grab something to eat. What a unique flavor. You've gained too hot. I've gained poison. That's what I've gained. What in the... Nightshade. Disgusting snack. Poisonous when eaten. I see. Probably shouldn't do that. Uh, these ones safe? Okay, these ones look safe. Jeez. Should learn to read the labels before I eat. Back to looking at the cool animation. Well, I've finished sifting and we've got a bunch of cool stuff. We've got some bone meal, andesite, tough, appetite, flax, all sorts of cool things. Most importantly, we've got some iron nuggets. Not very many, though. I'll say we've successfully completed task three of sifting the ground. Now we need to automate this. And for that, it looks like we're going to be using a combination of water wheels and, and other weird crushing things. And there we go. That's what we need. A material generator. So we're going to work our way towards this. Let's see what we can do. I should probably clear these trees first. These frog murdering trees. First, we upgraded our string meshes to andesite to unlock additional drops from sifting. And we even waterlogged one of the things so we could sift sand through it for even more unique drops. We sifted a whole bunch of dirt, gravel, sand and dust to complete some more quests. But then tired and hungry from turning the crank, I suddenly remembered I was supposed to be automating this whole thing, and therefore I had no need to be standing here doing this whatsoever. So I constructed a water wheel, got given a whole bunch more, then hooked them all up to my sifter array. And now look at the thing go, this is awesome. I can just chuck stuff in and it's automating everything, and I seem to be missing a mesh here. Let's chuck that back on. I may as well throw some dirt in there as well, but that is working a treat. I really like that. Oi, what are you doing? Get out of my bed. Jeez, the cheek. Although we're making good progress, we haven't quite completed task four yet, which was to fully automate this, because we need to hook up a cobble generator and a millstone and get this all flooding down, so we don't even have to touch it. We can then have at least gravel auto-sifting, which will generate lots and lots of ores for us, and that's definitely something we want. And on looking at the quest page, this is where we need to get to. We really need this material generator, because that's going to auto-generate cobble for us. So I guess we need to make a squeezer to get some lava and figure it out from there. So I've just discovered you can actually sift leaves as well from the oak trees, which actually gives us access to witch hazel saplings, willow saplings, as well as some azaleas and other bits and bobs too. Which is great, because now it means we can have some variation on our mill building when we get to it. So this is the willow log. It's looking pretty grey. I actually quite like that. I think we could probably make use of that. And for a little bit of colour, we've even got some witch hazel log, but they're very subtle. I like those. But let's stop getting distracted. We need to make ourselves a squeezer. So I think that goes in there. And then do I just jump? Boing, 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 boing. Well, we have lava, and I think if I do that... Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, let's see if we can get a whole bucket. Well, I have a bucket's worth of lava in there, but I don't have a bucket, and I don't have enough iron to make one. So, I guess I'm back to punching the ground again. Bucket acquired, and boom, we have our lava. Excellent. On closer inspection of the quest book, however, it appears we're not actually going to be able to go any further with the automation in today's episode, because we need to actually build a mob farm first, because basically we need leather. We need to be able to build a bookshelf, and we just can't do that at the moment. But we've still automated some of it, so I'm going to say we've done task four. We've automated sift in the ground, kind of. But now what I need to do is get lots and lots of wood. I actually need to clear all this up now. I need to get rid of it, basically, so that we can build ourselves a nice mill, a nice house, and we're going to integrate this into the build. Although currently I have absolutely no idea how we're going to do that. But now let's just get a whole bunch of wood, and this looks like the mahogany, which looks nice. Ooh, very red. Nice. My axe is broken. Leg it. Ooh, night vision goggles. So I've just noticed the leaves on these trees here that were already on the island. Actually different. There you go. Look, we've got birch leaves there. I wonder, can we maybe get a... There we go. Look, we've got a birch sapling. Excellent. Let's see what else we've got. Ooh, we've got some dark oak leaves. Let's see if we can get some saplings from these. I've just about managed to grab four dark oak saplings. Hopefully, we'll be able to get some more from that. Safe to say, we definitely got enough dark oak saplings back. Excellent stuff. Back to the grind. Well, it's confirmed. I'm a genius. It's all just coming straight towards me now. Excellent stuff. I'm a double genius. Just found me auto-clicker. Oh, my days. There's another one. Get out of it. I can't even run away, I haven't got the food. Ooh, there's a wandering trader. Check up, buddy. Really? Two emeralds for an elytra? What? 
What, have we got emeralds? We've got eight. Amazing. Right, well, we're going to buy ourselves a couple of elytra. You, sir. That is amazing. What in the world? Yep. We'll have a couple of those just in case one breaks. And we'll get some pumpkin seeds as well, because they might come in handy. I can't believe that. You, sir, are a legend. Despite all the interruptions, we have managed to get a good amount of wood. Look at all that. We even managed to get some mangrove because another trader came by. We've got a whole bunch of stone and cobble and we collected some vines for some mossy cobble. And we've got lots of andesite, diorite, tuff and other bits and bobs as well. So we should be in a good position to actually build something. And that second chest we killed, the thing that we're trying to bite our face off, dropped these boots, which means as long as we're running, we can walk on water. But as soon as I stop, I sink. You never know, they may have a use. I've also removed our sifting contraption because my plan here is to build a mill of some kind kind and see what we can do. We also got a bee's nest look, which I can't really move at the moment because I don't have silk touch. So I think the plan here is going to be to mark out where the water wheels are going to go and I guess work out a foundation for this building. And for that, I'm going to make use of some stone and tough and stuff like that. Let's make a foundation. That looks like a good size to start with. And I think the first thing we're going to do is work out this side of the building because of course this is where the water mill needs to go. And I have actually discovered something and that is that these water wheels are actually quite small and would look quite silly on on the side of a house but thankfully we also have these look at the size of that that's a giant water wheel so i think i'm going to be making use of one of those at least on the outside on the inside the actual power is going to be driven by the small ones but that's gonna look so much better on the outside so let's get this engine room all built up and nicey nicey well we're making a good start i really like this mahogany wood i think that works amazing for a roof and the wheel looks cool as well although it doesn't really make sense because it's not even in a river but let's just pretend that it is and if we go around on the inside here you can see i've got the water wheels working i've even put some cogs in to speed it up and we're all set up to put our sifters in across the front here in fact i think i might quickly do that now just to make sure that there's definitely space for everything and then we're going to build up the rest of this building which will actually be the main part of the build but hopefully when i bring you back in we'll have a fancy looking building well i guess it's kind of fancy but it's also kind of spooky as well i think that's just due to the tones of the wood that i've used but i'm so pleased with how this has come out especially considering the limited resources and stuff we have available to us and if we jump into free cam as well we can see it absolutely dominates this island that big wheel there really does make a difference as well but i think for a little starter house that's pretty good not a bad looking island i've also cleaned up all the mess we had out here and moved that inside so if we take a little peek indoors it's nothing fancy i'll be honest it's just a bunch of barrels and chests pretty much at the moment but these chests look cool but most importantly we have power so i've rooted some of the power into these so that's what's powering these sifters so we can chuck things in here and that will all sift into these boxes but i've also extended the power up a little bit so we do have access to power for elsewhere in the building as and when we need it upstairs is looking pretty empty at the moment but we've got plenty more space for storage for the early game and we've also got a bit of a mezzanine floor up here and that's where our bed is but yeah we, we're kind of lacking stuff really to make the interior look a little bit better but for now i think this is going to do us just fine and with that i'll say we've had a very successful first episode i'm going to chill here and do a little bit of fishing because apparently there's some cool loot you can get from it and i'll see you on the next one bye bye now in today's episode of ftb skies we build a brand new island to house a mob farm automate our cobblestone generation and harness the power of the wind using create there was also a minor problem with rabbits so since last episode i've done a little bit of fishing in the hope of snagging some leather but luck has not really been on my side all i've really found is the junk you can see in my hot bar and a slightly better rod but not only that it's been extremely slow so that means we're going to move on to plan b and build ourselves a passive mob farm but first while i've been here fishing i noticed we have actually completed a couple of quests and most importantly this one here is going to give us some fireworks which means we can actually go for our first flight although we've only got 32 rockets so i suppose we should probably be careful but let's see if we can get a better look at our island oh look at that thing what is that? Is that bee? Yep, we seem to have we seem to have bees that have Oh, that's not a bee. What is that? I don't know what this is. Oh, and what's this? There's other islands. We must explore. This island doesn't seem to have much of interest though, and that one looks much the same. Let's go check that place out. So there seems to be some kind of a herb garden, I guess. It's all, all hexerai stuff by the looks of it. Well, this is a cool little place, but I don't really think there's anything here for us, which is a shame. Uh, let's see what else is around. All these little islands just look the same. I think there's things down there. <laughs> No 
you. Enough distractions. We need more land. And I think what I want to do is actually go out this way here. So we're going to bridge out sort of 10 blocks or so. And then we're going to start a new island. And eventually, as I say, we will connect that up nicely. For that, we're going to need a whole bunch of dirt, which means we need to punch the ground again. But our water base system worked quite well last time. So I'm going to quickly build another one of those up here just so we can catch everything. There we go. That should do the trick. Although I do wonder before we start, I want to do a little test. So wooden hoppers, I think they actually move stuff through them really quickly. So if we chuck maybe a whole stack in there. Yeah, look at that. Look how quickly that went into the chest. So what I'm thinking is we can probably put a hopper here. In fact, what I'm going to do is put a whole bunch of hoppers in. Let me quickly get rid of this to make it my job a little bit easier. I'm going to put a whole bunch of hoppers in because this way, hopefully, it will go into the hoppers before it gets to me, which means I can punch for longer because I must have an empty hand to make this work. Oh dear. Oh man, look what it's done to the landscape. It's ruining everything. Pesky creepers. Oh, what's this? A barrel. Charm of levitation. And an iron wand. An angel block, whatever that is. And the endless sky. Ooh, thank you, creepers. Although I am going to repair the damage you made, you pesky little blighters. I do wonder though, are there any other hidden, hidden things? Oh, what's this? An Easter egg. That sounds fun. Do we do we just do we just throw that? Something is happening. They're multiplying. Oh no! Oh, oh my days! There's... Oh dear! What, what have I done? There's so many. Do something. What am I supposed to do? Oh, I've made a terrible mistake. I'm gonna have so much food though. enough. Well, we certainly solved our food problem. That's good. And we've got 41 rabbit hide as well. Ooh. Ooh. Can we make leather from rabbit hide? We can. We can use four rabbit hide to make leather. Oh, that's amazing. So we're still going to build a mob farm, but the good news is we can actually build the island up proper because we can kind of switch the order we're going to do things. I'm, I'm going to finish up here and finish punching the ground to get all the dirt ready, but that means we could potentially actually build the cobblestone generator first because with leather, we can make a bookshelf and get all the things we need. This is wonderful news. And there we go, we have our bookshelf. So this is why we needed the bookshelf. We are looking to make a linking tool. We basically just need a stick and a gem of any kind, and we need to make sure we put them in the correct hands. So we have one stick and one emerald, and if we click that, oh, it steals our bookshelf, but it does give us the linking tool. And that means we can now make our pedestal, which is the first step to getting cobble auto-generated. Now we have the pedestal, we just need to make ourselves a material generator so let's get this sorted hey would you look at that we killed that many rabbits we got a statue for it that should give us what we need and look at all this stuff we're getting oh loads of stuff now to figure out how these things work that's another one of these guys although they do drop good loot at least i'm prepared with a weapon this time oh jeez an obsidian skull. The wearer becomes temporarily immune to fire damage when hurt by fire. That sounds like a good thing. We'll wear that. Still trying to figure this out, though. So I think I've finally got it all working. It was a little bit confusing, but basically this pedestal is sitting on top of a block of stone, and it's automatically mining it and creating cobble, which is then transferring it over to this pedestal, which is exporting it and dumping it into this chest here. And that means we've got infinite cobble now, which is absolutely fantastic. But I also need a whole lot of stone, and we still need the dirt here as well. But I do wonder if we can actually make use of a little bit of create here and maybe auto smelt this. Let's see what we can make. And I think that should just about do the trick. We've managed to pull some power out from inside the building. We've just got that running under the ground here. And now we've got a fan that goes through the lava and then that cooks the cobble, which is being spat out by this andesite funnel. So, oh no, no, no. Oh, for the love of tell you what, later on in this series, I'm going to find a really interesting way to kill creepers. As I was saying before, we were rudely interrupted. I think we've got all this working now, so we're going to end up with cobble at the back in that barrel there. And it's getting cooked into stone over here, and that's going to give us the basis of what we need for our island, because we do kind of want to match what we've already got here under this one. And that's going to mean lots and lots of stone and lots of big spikes. Well, it turns out we can actually also generate dirt as well if we make ourselves some compost, and that looks like something we can probably accomplish. But well, there we go. That was quite 
simple. So we're now auto producing dirt, we're auto producing cobble, and we're auto producing stone, which means we're going to have everything we need to build this island. We just need to find a starting point, which means we're probably going to need to hang ourselves over the edge with a bucket. That's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to grab a bunch of stone, a small amount of cobble, and I think I'm going to bridge out first and then head down. That seems to make the most sense. Here seems as good a spot as any. So we're going to head down like this and we're just going to pillar all the way down until we get ourselves to a nice starting point. So we're going to start the island about here. We'll clean up this mess as we go. And I'm just going to start laying some blocks and hoping for the best, really. If there's anything like that one, most of it's going to end up in shadow anyway. So I don't need to worry too much about the different textures and whatnot. What is that? What, what am I supposed to do about that? Oh, my days. Problem is, I don't have any ranged weapons, so we're probably best off just jumping into the void here and then trying to land back on our island. And hopefully that's despawned him. Well, it's not a bad start for the first spike, but I've already run out of stone, which means I might actually make myself another one or two of these and, uh, yeah, just try and get this process going a little bit quicker. There we go. That's more like it. We've now got four cookers on the go at once and just two of these pedestals is enough to keep up with it. I didn't mean to put my rabbit in there. Is that going to... My rabbit going to spit out? Oh, no. That's not what we wanted. But what we do want is all this stone that's coming through. That's going to be very, very helpful. But it's certainly much quicker now, and that should keep us stocked up while we do our build. And we're getting a buttload of dirt from this thing as well. We're about an hour or so in, and I think it's coming along quite well. We've managed to get a few spikes in, and they're just starting to come together now. So if we look at the top here, the fourth one's just about to come in and join the rest. But we need to look at this, and there's lots of sort of dangly bits that are a bit more on the outside. So we maybe want to start sort of marking out where the outer ring's going to be, at least on the lower end, and then we can expand it as it gets higher up. And hopefully, we'll have lots and lots of space. Look at the size of this thing. And my stone creation has just about been keeping up with the pace of me building, so that's all good as well. I'm glad we upgraded it. After about two hours' work, we're finally here with the island. I've got all the dirt down, and I have to say the building ones really help with that. They let you place loads of blocks at once. Although I have burned through my diamonds. But if we come down to this random little blob viewing platform, thing we've been using over here if i can land on it maybe i should make it a bit bigger there we go so if we come down here we can see it's fairly similar to this one i mean this one's got a few more sort of smaller spiky bits and so on but they're kind of hard to do underneath especially when i've only got 15 rockets left so what we might actually have to do is when we get a bit of levitation maybe sort of come around here and do this a little bit i know we have a levitation charm but i've not messed around with that yet and i really want to get on with this mob farm so maybe we'll have a look at that in a future episode but this has given us a nice large amount of space we should be able to get another couple of buildings on here and of course the first one we want to do is going to be for this mob farm we've just got to figure out how to do it and i think with the help of this quest line we should be able to do exactly what we want so we want a passive mob farm and for that we need delighted dirt which you actually get from a golden egg and i think with a combination of fans one of these mob mashers and maybe a couple of hoppers we should be able to farm up everything we need so over the next 15 minutes or so i crafted all the items that i would need for this i spent ages finding the golden egg i'd search nearly every chest in the house but eventually i did find it. I then headed over to the new island, placed the crusher and the fans, hooked up a basic collection system and slapped down some levers around to power the thing. I tried to convert the ground only to realise it needed to be vanilla dirt or grass in order to work, so I grabbed some dirt, jumped in to swap it out and... Uh oh. Ow, 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 ow. On the plus side, at least we can say the mob masher works. So let's quickly just turn all of this off before we get inside again. Classic beardy getting inside mob farms. Let's do that. Oh, look at that. Wow, there's loads of them. Oh, no, 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 they're escaping. No, 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 no. Okay, right, we need a bigger wall. We need a bigger wall. And a roof, apparently. Jeez, okay. That didn't quite go to plan. Oh, I need a little bit more glass, but I think this is going to work nicely. And we've got loads of stuff that's... Well, it's going to have to die, isn't it? We can't leave that roaming the island. Although I quite like this little guy. He can stay. And you. You can stay too. Well, it's definitely working. Although, what are these things? Ability totems? I don't even know, but let's quickly get the rest of this roof in, just so nothing else can escape. The roof is now in, all the mobs will be contained, and I've put in these little slabs, I've noticed they're dropping XP, so we're going to have to put in some kind of XP collection system at some point, because that's going to come in handy. But it is producing a lot of these totems, so yeah, we're going to need to sort out this storage fairly sharpish, I would imagine. But first, I want to wrap this thing in some kind of a building. And I was going to do a barn, because it's got animals in it, but because we're actually going to be turning that into a sort of a farming island, I think maybe a 
windmill is going to suit a bit better. Thankfully, we've got loads of building materials, so let's go make a start. And we're going to make sure we use a similar palette to what we've got over there as well. So let's just start placing some blocks and see how we get on. That's not a bad start. I think something like this should work nicely. We've got some little stairs up here to get inside, and this actually puts us on top of the mob farm here, although I'm probably going to put in a different floor. I don't think I want to be seeing all the death down here. It's bad enough hearing it every three seconds. So what I'm going to do now, I guess, is just build up a couple more levels. We're going to get slightly narrower as we go up, and then we're going to have a lovely working windmill at the top. Got to make use of create while it's here, I guess. I then spend some time putting in the floors, building them up with witchy woods for the structure and oak variants for the main walls. I then dove into create to install the windmill. Making use of the windmill bearing and many, many sails, we built the blades, glued it all together, and that brings us to now. And look at this thing. I absolutely love it. And to be honest, I think the villager does as well. He seems to have moved in over here. It's by no means finished. It still needs a roof. It needs some windows, but I'm already in love with it. This is absolutely awesome. And not only that, if we have a look on the inside, we can see the power is being routed down already. I've even managed to speed it up. So as we go through the windmill, we can see all the gears and things doing their stuff and things to speed it up. Oh, I love it. And down here on the ground floor, I've installed some drawers for sorting out the mobs from down here and all the drops that you get from them. And I have noticed that occasionally, this stuff sort of seems to grow, and then when it gets fully grown, mobs don't spawn on it anymore. So I've installed a lever so I can wash away all the things, and then that kind of ups the rates again, as you can see. And I may automate that at some point, but for now, I think it's absolutely fine, because we don't want this thing running too solidly, and as I say, I still don't know what all these things are. We'll just leave them collecting for now. So I've just discovered this awesome thing, which is a glass blower's workbench, and if we chuck in some panes, we can turn them into awesome things. And I have actually put these ones on the building, but if we have a little look, we can just about see them from here i think they stand out a little bit too much and it turns out we can actually use stained glass in this as well and i think these ones here are going to look a little bit more subtle than their counterparts yeah they're just a little bit more subtle i think that's definitely going to work better yep the white stained version looks much better it doesn't stand out anywhere near as much let's get some detail on this thing don't do it rocky don't do it i will find a way to make you happy just just don't fall off that bridge Jeez. I think I need to make this safer. But before we get to that, look at this. I think I've finished it. Just a couple of lamps, some leaves, and of course, a sign with an enchanted hoe in it. And I think that's uh, I think that's pretty much done. So our passive mob farm is up and running. We just need to sort out this connection to the, to the main island. Because I have noticed that the villager seems to have adopted that bed as its place of residence. However, every day he's still walking across this one wide bridge, coming here to work, and then he basically stands on these stairs and jumps around for a while because he can't quite get to his barrel. But then when he's done, he goes back across this one wide bridge and sleeps in a bed directly above the sound of lots and lots of dying passive mobs. So to make his life a little bit better, I think we're going to put in a lovely bridge here. And I was going to put in a rope bridge of some sort, but I think I might actually try and put in some kind of a natural land bridge. I think it's just going to look a little bit nicer. And our smelters over here, although they're currently sorting out some gold and iron and other bits, they've been producing so much stone, we may as well make use of it. So I'm going to once more lower myself into the abyss and see if we can get something stuck in here. And after placing a few blocks and not falling off too often, I think we're actually done. If we have a look at both sides here, I think that's looking pretty good. In fact, we can actually go into free cam and have a look at everything we've done today. Oh my word, we have definitely made this place bigger. And it's looking pretty good from the other side as well. Nice. So with that done and power now over here on this island, that means we can actually start farming because, well, we're basically surviving on meat at the moment. We do have our mob farm, which is obviously going to be great for meat in future. But we need to vary up our diet a little bit, which means we're going to get some crops growing. Might even be able to get down an automated tree farm here. But that's all going to have to wait for the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now. How am I still finding rabbits? We're back in FTB Skies, and after harnessing the power of the wind last episode, it's time we put it to use. Today, we improve our diet with a few automated farms using Create. We build a huge new island in our floating empire and upgrade our storage to deal with the influx of new items we'll be getting from our mega factory. Oh, no, oh no wait a minute. The factory's next episode. How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. Sorry, I got a bit carried away there. But we will at least sort out a storage island. However, first off today, we're going to deal with something nice and simple. Oh, my days! Okay, not quite what I meant. Oh, I haven't even got any ranged weapons. I don't, don't blow up my base. This is not a good start. Haha! -ha. So as I was about to say, we're going to jump down this hole. We're going to put on some armor, because we're smart. We're going to grab a shield, and we're going to deal with this problem. Oh, baby creeper? No! Why are there baby creepers? This is the worst. Oh, 
Problem solved. Now we can actually farm in peace. I do have a loose plan up here for how things are going to work. And it is, of course, going to be using Create. We're going to be automatically harvesting the crops and things that we plant up here. And I think what I might actually do is just put down a few different fields and then maybe mix up the crops within those fields. And we're not even going to harvest everything because we still want it to look nice. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is just mark out where I want these fields to be. So say, for example, that's the center of one field. We can have one that just sort of goes around this sort of way. And what I might actually do is dig out the hole where I want the center of the field to be. So we'll have one field there. We'll have one field around here. We'll stick another one centered maybe about there. So that's going to be roughly this sort of size. And I think we will put a fourth one in here as well, which once again is going to be roughly that sort of size. So the bits I'm marking out size-wise is just what's going to be harvested. We are actually going to have these whole areas pretty much as fields, and there's going to be crops everywhere. I just need to know where the actual important ones are going to be. Because as I say, that's what's going to be auto-collected for us. This is just the start, however. So what we need to do now is to get power over here. So I need to dig a whole bunch of trenches. And I need to take the power from this windmill here. And get it into these four separate locations. And I think that should just about do it. So this is the power that's coming down from the windmill. We've made sure to avoid the mob farm. We kind of go out the back of the windmill and down. And then we're actually slowing it down again a little bit. Because, well, we did speed it up inside the windmill. But I really like the cogs up there. And I kind of want to keep them. However, we did actually want the farm spinning around that fast in themselves so this should just about do it and then what i've done is i've just used shafts and gearboxes and it links up to each and every farm location and of course if we wanted to we can easily add some more but now we need to get outside and actually build these farms so in theory these should be fairly straightforward what i want to do is remove that and we should see our rotational power there it is so let's get this up to the surface uh in fact we want it one lower than the surface and these contraptions are going to be fairly simple so we're just going to use a mechanical bearing there and what we're going to do is just build up a simple contraption here i think we're going to put three harvesters on each one and then we need somewhere to store the items so i guess we might as well just put that on the edge here in fact i'm gonna grab some barrels they'll probably look a bit better there we go much better and then we'll stick a portable storage interface on there and then what that means is if we go roughly is it there i think it should be there We'll stick another interface there. Put an upgraded chest underneath it. So what we've done is we actually took a chest, we wrapped it in iron, then we wrapped it in gold, and that's given us a much bigger chest, which is going to be fine for now. We will, of course, upgrade this storage at some point. And then we put a chute on the top, and I think... I think that should work. I think that's basically everything. So right-click the bearing with an empty hand. So that should attach the structure in front of it. And then if we tap that and right, okay, yep, yeah, we need to, <laughs> we need the super glue. Of course we need the super glue. So let's actually glue the whole thing together. We'll glue that to that, that to that, and that to that. Now, hopefully this time it'll actually work when we turn it on. Look at that. Beautiful. And what that's going to do is it's going to rotate round. It will connect to this every time it spins. And if it's got stuff to drop off, it will empty. But basically, these things are just going to auto harvest whatever's in front of it. So we can plant whatever crops we want and we can just collect them all in this chest. But I'm going to turn it off for now because, well, we don't have any water in the farm and we don't have any crops. Plus, I need to build three more of these. So, yeah, I think I'm going to do that first, actually. Let's get the rest of these quickly built up. It should only take a moment. I've got all four of the farms in. They seem to be spinning and doing their thing which is marvelous and you may notice i've actually made them a bit longer i realized i might as well make them four as the uh the, the storage thing was sticking out anyway but yeah i think that's looking pretty good although we could do with some crops so we've got a bunch of seeds from sifting dirt so let's see what we've actually got shall we so it looks like we have seven things we can plant at the moment so what i'm probably going to do is put two on each field and then we'll just fill up the last field with a bit of sugar cane which means i'm going to need to add some more water i think i'm going to turn these off while i plant and because i'm a smart smart i did actually put a kill switch in the middle here i'm just going to make sure it's in the right place when i do it because otherwise when they turn back to solid blocks it will kill the rest of my crops and we don't want that but we didn't have quite enough seeds to fill everything up but we've got beetroot wheat and sugar cane so far in this field and over here we've got the berries we've got i can't remember what this one is i think this one's flax yeah that one's the flax then we've got tomatoes and we've got cabbages so we're gonna need to find some more seeds at some point but for now i think we can turn this farm on and we can just replant more fields and expand the crops further as they get harvested let's just hope it works systems on looks like it's spinning round Okay, well, we can't get sugar cane. That's clearly not going to work. But it looks like the rest are going to be absolutely fine. So I guess with the sugar cane, we can get it to work. But we'll have to do it slightly differently. 
So with this one, if I was to raise the harvesters up by a block, then it would just harvest the top level of the sugarcane and leave the bottom level. Brilliant. And now when the sugarcane grows, it should then get harvested. That's definitely a much better way of doing things over here. So I'm going to take a bird's eye view for a few minutes in free cam. I'm going to let these fields do their thing, let them collect some resources, and then I can look at actually planting a few more and filling out some of these edges. Now this is looking much better. Look at everything working. We've got some walls in. I've got the leaves down. And over a bit of time, we did manage to get enough seeds to sort of fill in the other bits as well. And not only that, we are collecting loads and loads of resources, which are going to come in very, very handy. Although I have no idea what they are. And if we have a look at this in free cam, we can see how it's all working. And I just absolutely love this. Create is so cool. However, the storage on this section is still very manual at the moment. And I guess what we want to do is feed it all into a storage room. But we don't really have a proper storage room at the moment. What we do have is a bunch of drawers and chests and things in this building. And, and that's about it. But that's just not good enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to build another island. We're going to make it a nice big island this time. Probably at least two, three times the size of these ones. It, it really does need to be quite big. And what we're going to do is start off just by putting a small storage unit on it. And eventually we are going to fill up the whole island with a factory and all the other bits and bobs we need. But essentially, we just need a really big area where we can build things. And as our cobble has been producing, look at that. We've got 7,000 cobble. We've got 11,000 dirt. And we've got... Yeah, 14,000 stones. So this has just been running the whole time. And I suppose once we do get the storage actually into another building over here, we can actually move this stuff indoors. That'll be nice because that stuff looks a right mess. So I guess the rest of my day is going to be placing blocks. But I did hear of this really cool trick that if you go into a house like this and then close the door, then when you open it again and run outside, there's an island down there. Look, it worked. There's an island. How cool is that? So it is, of course, a couple of hours later, but we have lots and lots of space here to build. And the first thing we want to do is sort out our storage. So for our initial plan for storage, we are going to use storage drawers. And I actually really like these ones. They're actually made of the mahogany. So if we just quickly make up a few more, I'll show you what I mean. So this is what we're going to be using. And each one of these slots here will hold eight stacks of an item, but they can also be upgraded. So as they start to fill up, we can upgrade them further. But most importantly, they have something called a draw controller. And that's basically basically a box I can go up to and just dump my entire inventory in and it will automatically sort out into all the different slots that's needed. However, the problem with this recipe is we're going to need lots of quartz. In fact, we're going to need 19 quartz because we need one for this. And of course, we need some for the blocks of quartz as well. And I don't have access to quartz currently. However, if we actually have a look here, it looks like we can get some by crushing. And this is going to be the easiest way for us. We do have rotational power with the create mod and we've got a buttload of diorite from sifting dirt. So this is going to be by far our easiest way to get quartz which means we need to build some things to actually get that done. The main part of that being to make crushing wheels, we actually need to do a massive recipe. And to do that massive recipe, we're going to need lots of mechanical crafting stuff. And the problems continue because for mechanical crafting, we need brass casing. For brass casing, we of course need brass. And I don't even know how we get brass. Copper, zinc, heated copper and zinc in that. That's, that's never going to happen. Oh my days. Okay, maybe, maybe we're not going to have a storage controller today. Oh, this is sad. I really wanted a storage controller. Fine, well, the game's not going to let me have one. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to build up the drawers. We're going to build up storage anyway. And I guess we'll just have to leave a hole for the storage controller. So we're probably actually going to need the factory before we can go too far with the storage and actually automate it as much as we want to. But that's fine. That's not a problem. For now, we can at least get the build down. And I think what I want to do is, well, although we've made a big island, probably could be a little bit bigger. And I might make it a little bit bigger between episodes. But for the storage area, what I actually want to do is kind of hang it over the edge just to do something a little bit quirky and leave as much space as possible for the power station and the factory that we're going to need to put over there. Anyway, that's enough waffle for me. I'm going to grab a whole bunch of blocks and see if we can get something in here that we can then use for storage. We'll just start with the platform first, which means we get to select a nice wood to use. And I have taken advantage of this space and I've harvested lots and lots of trees, which I've been putting into the giant storage crates. So we've got lots of wood to be working with so we should be absolutely fine for this platform and while i think of it something else we have access to is this which is a carpentry bench and i believe this works in a similar way to the glass blowing one yes look at this looks so we've got access to lots of different wood types and so on 
I do wonder, does it do planks as well? It does. So there's a buttload of different planks. This is very cool. I've got down a basic platform and a frame of what I think I want to build. And it looks a little bit weird and janky at the moment, but it's just a frame. Once we get the walls in, hopefully it'll make sense. But we're going to have a little outside bit here. The small sort of lean to that we're going to have a few of the workbenches in like that wood one over there. And then in this section here, we're going to have our main storage going across this back wall and around the corners here. So this is going to be sort of a bit of a compact storage room. This one here is going to be a bit more open, probably with a higher ceiling. And then out here, once again, we're going to have an outside area because I do have plans for this as well. But that should give us plenty of storage, at least to begin with. And the good thing is, I guess we can always go underground if we need to as well. But what I need to do now is get in some walls. And once again, we're going to be sticking with a similar palette. So we're going to be using stone variants on the bottom layer here. And then we'll be using oak and mangrove for the walls and the roof at the top. And hopefully this will get done fairly quickly. It should come together fairly quickly. I mean, I know what I'm doing, right? Well, it turns out I don't have a clue what I'm doing and this has been taking forever. But we are making some good progress. We've managed to get the roof on. We've got the shape in. And I really like how these walls have come out. I was playing around with all the different brick types so much because I also built myself a masonry table, which basically does the same thing as the wood and the glass blowing one. But I do like how this building's come out. I have made a start on the interior as well. We'll go to that in a minute. But basically, the main storage unit is all this bit here. We've got the workshop sticking out the front here. We've got an area here as well. I did actually set up just a small water wheel beneath just to get a tiny bit of power, just because, well, the side of the building looked a bit plain and I wanted some movement. But we could also use that for sort of temporary devices as and when we need to. But I also got a bit carried away and just wanted to spam loads of cogs on a wall so until we actually have a use for that space it's the wall of cogs and i like it and over here i've just started putting in some of the storage so i've worked out where a whole bunch of drawers are going to go and we've got plenty of space for expansion if we need more i decided not to put a top floor in for now there's holes in the roof the roof's all a bit janky and to be honest that's mainly for a bit of better light during the day and then we've got the platform out the back here as well which i've done absolutely nothing with as yet but i do plan to do something with this area in future just probably not today so the next step is to get everything over here that I've been stashing up in boxes. I mean, that building there is just full of absolute rubbish and some really good stuff as well. So I need to sort out what we want to keep and what we don't. This could take a while. May have found a way to get the storage controller because we can actually get quartz from washing soul sand. We need to get soul sand. And I think I've worked out how. So what we're going to do is we're going to sift some gravel to get all the resources we need to make a photogenic isolator. And then we need to give it some power. So we'll make a small generator, load it up with coal, and stick that around the back. We'll then add in some water and some demon seeds and leave it in the sun. And eventually we'll get some demon fruit. We're then going to throw that on the floor and set fire to it, which is going to give us this lovely wibbly wobbly flame. And we'll cook up some clay, make some bricks, and throw them in the fire. That's going to give us some nether brick. What we can then do is the whole pillory thing again, like we do with cobble. And that's going to give us an infinite supply of netherrack. We'll then build up a fan system we'll put some netherrack in front we'll set fire to it oh no wait that's not gonna work of course that doesn't make blue flame i need soul sand to make the blue flame to make the soul sand ah. don't panic i've got another plan so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sift more gravel to get all the resources we need to make a crystallizer this time and then we're gonna demote the photogenic isolator and steal all the power meanwhile we're gonna be sifting loads of sand to get some quartz dust which we're then gonna add to the crystallizer alongside a few buckets of water and then we're gonna get quartz that way and there we go, we've actually got some. That thing was as slow as anything, however. That took literally like three minutes. So I'm going to need to find a way to speed this up. We're actually getting quartz now, which is great because it means we can actually make our storage controller. Come here, you. Can't throw that away. I've just realised I'm a bit of an idiot and I only need four pieces of quartz in order to make a block, which means we only need nine pieces in total. But it has taken about 15 minutes just to get those first four. So we're still going to be here a while, I guess. I'm going to carry on sorting out my storage in the meantime. And you'll be pleased to know, I think we're actually done. I even made this walkway look nice. Look, I didn't want Jeff falling off when he's commuting because apparently Jeff lives over here now. He keeps just moving into my new houses. And I even cleaned up all the mess that was out here. But I mean, the yard does still need a bit of tidying up and so on. But inside, look at this. We have our storage sorted out. So we've got all of our food over here with plenty of space for expansion because I know there's a lot of different food types. I'm fairly sure Farmer's Delight is in this mod, and I really do like that, so uh, you expect the kitchen at some point. But I've got bulk storage here for all the items we're going to have lots and lots of. We have our storage controller, which, well, took forever, but now we have it. Oh my days, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to punch you, Mr. Bat. That was just unfortunate. Although, why did it hurt me? That's weird. And I also decided to make use of the, all of these cogs that we have here, and I've installed myself a lift, and uh, I really did want to use some Create Redstone wireless things, but I can't actually make them at the moment. However, thanks to a couple of Endermen, I was able to make a transmitter here and a receiver up here, which means I can stand on here, flick this lever, and down goes my lift. 
the problem is it doesn't actually go anywhere at the moment. It, it basically just goes down into the void, and, and I, I can't do anything to get back up until we get there. It's pointless, but it's fun, and I love it. I think that's a really good start to that island, though, and we've sorted our food today. We've had a wonderful time, and I've also cleared up all the mess that was out here, and the plan was to actually put those in here, but I haven't done so yet. However, we do have power going through this area, and that just means that as we're building next episode, as I say, I do want to build a factory, but I'm fairly sure I'm probably going to need to make a couple of other smaller contraptions just to get us there. And now we have the space for it, which is marvellous. Oh, is that Loot B throwing stuff off the edge again? Why you do this to me? Why, why? In this episode of FTB Skies, I build a contraption that throws food all over the place. We go to the nether and beat up some pigos and make a good start on our ore processing factory in our search for coal, which we're also throwing through the air, by the way. But before we do any of that, we're going to need something that we just can't really find around here. And that, of course, is a blaze. And we need to capture at least one, ideally some more. And what we're going to capture them in is this. This is a blaze burner. And we're going to use this to create lots and lots of heat, basically, which will enable us to make brass. And unlocking brass is going to make such a difference to what we can do with create. Not only that, we can also use these as a power source for generating steam and so on. So we'll get into that a bit later as well for a lovely power station. So to get blaze, we do, of course, need to go to the nether. But you know me, I can't just dump a portal down somewhere. So I think what I'm going to do is just build a small island, maybe just something in the middle here. And, well, stick a nether portal on that and we can theme it. Then we can make it look all nethery and nice. Probably not until we've actually gone to the nether to get the blocks. But initially, we can at least just dump down an island, can't we? So let's grab some stone and quickly get that done. So I built a small island. I filtered a whole bunch of dust to get more blaze powder. And then I basically bounced up and down on the squeezer for a while to get some lava. And once I had enough obsidian, I carved a few blocks just because I could. Built myself a small portal, added a little bit of glass for detail, as well as some leaves and some netherrack in the ground. And then I connected the two islands with a small bridge. And then the addition of a couple of safety bushes and connecting up to the main path meant we were done. And I think we're basically ready to light the portal. I'm hoping it's going to be fine. I don't think I've used any of the weird chiseled obsidian blocks on this, but I'm really actually quite liking how this looks. And hopefully we can get some more nethery type bits on the floor once we actually go to the nether. See if it's going to light. And it does. But I'm not really wearing the right stuff, I don't think, to be able to go to the nether. So let's make ourselves a little bit of armor first, shall we? Now, I know what you're thinking. You're wondering, Biddy, what do you look like? What are you wearing? And I'm going to show you. So from killing those chests that spawn in, we have managed to get some fairly useful gear. We've got stuff that means we can run away when we get hit. We'll set stuff on fire if it attacks us. These give us night vision, which is obviously going to be good. And of course, the hat we've had on the whole time, which gives us an extra level of fortune. And I mean, I could, I could hide the visibility of these. Where's the fun in that? But that's not all. We've got our digging claws, which make us look a little bit like Wolverine. I've got an obsidian skull to protect me from fire. I've got a magnet to draw items towards me. And lastly, I have my, my spiky feet, which basically mean I'm immune to knockback. So hopefully I won't get knocked off any ledges in the nether. But not only that, of course, I've got some food. I've got 20 blaze burners. I'm obviously very confident I'm going to find some. And of course, a whole bunch of cobble. And I think the last thing I want to do is grab myself a fresh elytra. And to be honest, we can probably actually make a few more rockets. That we can. Look at that we've got a stack and a half that'll do because i don't want to make sure i'm prepared for any eventuality and that means i can do a little bit of exploring while we're there as well i am going to hide the digging claws though because they really are quite annoying to have them on my screen the whole time there we go we don't need to see those right onwards into the nether what do we got it is incredibly red um we appear to be in a crimson forest and by the looks of it there's absolutely nothing here whatsoever okay um well let's create ourselves a little little platform at least shall we so i'm looking at my map it's it's just a void. There's absolutely nothing here. So I guess we're going to have a quick little fly around. Just see if anything else does exist in this place. Oh, we found something. What's this? Well, there's a bunch of endermen. There's some piglins. And there's a spawner there. What kind of spawner is that? That is a piglin spawner. Oh, we've got some loot chests, but they're going to get so angry if I open that. And he's wearing netherite, so I don't think I want to anger the piggos just yet. So it looks like I might be able to get away with opening this chest. There's no piggos on this side. Hmm, they might see me though. Let's, uh, let's just block them off for a little bit, shall we? Oh, what's all this? Gem of the Warlord. That sounds like fun. Splash potion, lodestone, e-spawn egg. Diamond helmet, some shards, some processors. Okay, yeah, not too bad. I do kind of want to search some more boxes now. Problem is, they're going to get very, very angry as soon as I do that. And I don't have a bucket with me, so I can't lava them. Do you reckon if I punch one and then run this way, they'll just get angry and fall down the hole? You going to fall down the hole? That one did. Go on, go on, that's it. Just, just fall to your doom. That's it, Piggos. Bye-bye. 
Oh, I've just looked at an enderman. Don't do that. Let's see how many of these chests we can get away with looting, shall we? Well, I think I've taken what I can. The pig owner are a bit angry at me now because I had to swap out my gold helmet to hold the diamond one. And there's still a bunch of chests I've not even opened. But I think we're going to have to leave this place for now because I am full of cool stuff and some stuff I just have no idea what it is. And this was miles away from where we actually came in. This is where we started. So I might take a slight loop around this way and just see if there's any other structures along the way because we can always come back and explore them later. We're getting too distracted. We've got a factory to build. But I really do need a blaze. Well, there is another structure, but it looks very similar to the one I was just at yeah it looks like another piglin village which means still no blazes but we've made it home and all we found was a couple more piglin villages so we've got plenty to explore when we go back but we haven't found what we were actually looking for which is a little bit frustrating so i wonder if there's another way to get blaze so i've done a bit of research and it looks like i might be able to spawn blazes if i make fell pumpkins which funnily enough i do actually have one of those already sitting over here because we got it for a quest reward i just didn't realize it could be used to make a thing so let's see if this works let's grab some iron bars and i'm sure nothing will possibly go wrong over here don't worry jeff J just just stay behind the wall you'll be fine and we put two iron bars and then we put this on top and ideally we just want to try and catch it straight away in this blaze burner so let's give this a go oh my god it worked it worked yes I can't believe we did all that in the nether and all we had to do. Oh, my days. On the plus side, it does mean we can make absolutely loads of them. And I completely forgot I was still wearing this. So uh, I'm going to take all this off. I look absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I'm keeping the top hat, obviously. Right, well, I'm going to get all this stuff organized. We've got the right mess of stuff in our inventory now. And then we can actually crack on with what we're supposed to be doing today. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Hey, would you look at that? We've actually completed our getting started quests. If we just click this. Ah. Oh. Beautiful, we are done. But what I'm here to look at is this one here, because there's other things that we need to do off to the side here. But what I actually want is a mechanical mixer. So, yeah, we need to make ourselves one of these, which is going to give us a basin. And then we can crack on and actually make some brass. So let's get the brass production sorted first, shall we? Well, actually, just before we do that, we are going to need a whole bunch more blaze burners. And if I remember correctly, there we go. We did actually buy some pumpkin seeds from that very first trader we saw. Although we only bought one, so this could take a while. But we're going to need more blazes and that means we're going to need more pumpkins so let's just quickly get this planted outside we can keep an eye on it and we're just going to basically try and get as many as we can we need ideally about 20 or so for our power station i mean we're probably not going to need that many but i like to be prepared and we might as well bow mill this to give it a bit of a head start there we go so let's see if we can get a brass production line set up shall we and just like that we're making brass so we've got our blaze burner down here which we do need to fuel up so i've just been throwing coal at it every now and then and what that is doing is heating this basin and this has copper coming in from that side zinc coming in from that side and then that's spitting out brass for us which is all going in here and well that's that's it really there's not really much else to explain but that's going to work an absolute treat for us so i'm just going to make sure that's fully fueled up and hopefully we'll have a whole bunch of brass when we come back so with brass production running and of course with pumpkins growing wow that's quick Jeez, i've literally just bone milled that oh, oh my days okay Okay, we're going to get pumpkins nice and quickly. I like this. So as I was trying to say, now that we've got pumpkins growing, we've got brass production happening, what we need to do is sort out the storage on these farms that we built before. Because if we have a look in some of these boxes, they're getting pretty full up already. And what I want to do is move all this stuff over to main storage. I think I've got an idea on how we're going to do it. And it basically involves the middle of this island. So if we dig straight down... Bloop. That's going to bring us down to all the space under here. And we've got lots and lots and lots of space down here. So I think what I want to do is build up some kind of a conveyor system to get all of the resources from the farms into one corner. And then we're going to fling them onto the other island, to put it simply. What I mean by that is that we're going to use one of these. So if we just quickly hook this up to some power, we'll see it charge up. Oh, we've overstressed the contraption. Maybe we won't. Let's remove this and hopefully that will give us enough leeway. There we go. So basically that pulls back and when anything lands on it, it gets flung somewhere. And what you can do is this thing here actually sets up to like 32 blocks away, I think. So for example, if we choose a location of that spot there and we put the flinger in there, anything that lands on here 
is going to land over on that spot that we've just identified. So it'll pull back and then it'll fling it. And look at that, it's landed exactly where we hoped it would. We will, of course, need to make this go very, very fast so that it can just go ping, 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 ping and fling our food all the way across the gap. At least that's the hope. But first up, I need to actually get everything from there into one spot on that island. So I guess that's what we're going to be working out first. I think to make my life a little bit easier, actually, before we go too deep, I'm going to make myself a lovely backpack and give it a few upgrades just so we can carry more stuff because my inventory keeps getting full up and it's really quite annoying. So it's taken a while, but I think I've made some good progress. So we now have belts that go all the way from underneath each chest. Things are just fed down via a chute. So for example, up here, I think is the flax and the berries. So when stuff gets harvested, it drops down onto here and instantly, oh, look, just like that. So there we go. There's a berry that's just come through and then that gets picked up here, which goes into this giant vault. And this basically stores everything from all four farms. And as we have seeds coming through as well, you'll see the seeds get pooped out the bottom. Uh, they will just go into a fire or something at some point. But for now, the important thing is that they don't remain inside the vault. And this is just kind of like a buffer, really. So this is going to store everything that comes out of the farms that we do want to keep. The problem with vaults is we can't actually access them directly. So we're going to have to also put a funnel here with another filter that's got all the farm items on. And then they'll get pushed out this way. And I believe if we jump up on here, yay, look at that. We get thrown all the way onto this conveyor belt. And that's what's going to happen to the food. However, this currently goes nowhere. So I guess our next step is going to be to build up something over here to actually store all of this food. And I guess that means we are actually going to be ripping out the cog wall. I'm mildly sad about that. I have actually broken my lift anyway. So yeah, I'm going to need to kind of rebuild this whole thing. So I might as well just rip it all out for now. That is amazing. Look at that. It's flinging tomatoes across the map. Excellent. So this works. And the good thing is I can't accidentally pick them up if I get in the way either. They'll always land on this because they're basically not an entity when they're in the air. But if you look at that, look, they get flung out the side of the island. They land on this conveyor belt. And then once they're inside, they just go into this controller extension, which is basically the same as one of these. But you can place it up to 10 blocks away from the sort of centralized one. And it just sort of expands it. So anything that goes into here will get fed into storage. But I've also put in this little contraption here. So if anything goes in here that doesn't have a place in storage, it will just end up in this obsidian barrel it basically gets sorted into this sort of unlocked drawer and then it gets pulled out by the chute and put in here so for example an andesite mesh doesn't have a home in there so if anything happens to fall on there it has actually just shot through that and look at that straight into there so it did take a little bit longer than expected but i'm just glad the thing works excellent so the next thing i want to do is to make our power plant and for that we're going to need lots and lots of blazes so let's just do this and catch our blazes in cages Oh, no, I've run out of cages. I've run out of cages to capture them in. This was, this was not good. Okay, you need to die, sir. But we do now have 19 blaze burners, which is more than we're going to need. I'm probably just going to start this power station off with eight. But it's always good to be prepared for expansion, I guess. So for our power station, we're going to need steam engines. So let's have a little look at the ponder and work out how these are made, shall we? So I'm looking into it a little bit deeper. It would appear that it might be a little bit beyond me at the moment, purely because we don't really have a fuel source for these. Because, well, to generate steam, we need to feed these. And these basically use the same fuel as furnace, which is things like coal, which we will eventually get from our ore factory and also wood and stuff like that but basically things that we just don't have automated at the moment so before we can build our power plant we need to somehow automate a fuel source and then hopefully that's going to keep these things burning hmm i wonder how can we do this efficiently i have a feeling we're about to cut to one of those this is what i'm going to do but while i'm actually doing it things so before we can do anything we're going to need a lot of temporary power so we'll build a water wheel power plant with those big boy wheels then we'll grab our cobble generators and feed the results directly into a vault meanwhile we'll construct a mechanical crafter temporarily of course by the power plant in order to make giant grindstones we'll then extract the cobble grind it into gravel and feed it into another vault then we'll have an array of sifters going super fast and feed multiple channels of gravel into these a super fast conveyor belt will feed all the results into yet another vault that will filter out the coal along the way into its own storage drawer. No need for a vault there. See, look, I knew it. But it's the best way for me to edit down these bits where I don't really know what I'm doing. Otherwise, you would have had about three hours of waffling as I was trying to figure things out. But everything is now working as I hoped. And our temporary power station, to be honest, I quite like it. And I might end up keeping it just to power these bits here. But it's certainly not going to have enough power for the long term. So these vaults are actually really cool as well because they store just vast amounts of stuff. And what I've actually done, if we go around to this vault at the back here. So this one here is storing up all of the things that aren't coal. So what I've done is I've got a threshold switch. So this is where it's up to at the moment, volume wise, how full it is. But when it gets to here, it's going to send a redstone signal to this little device. And that 
is connected all the way over here right at the base of our power station so when that gets really full it will trigger a redstone switch that's going to trip this clutch and it's going to turn the whole thing off and the good thing is as i empty it when it gets back down below here it will turn back on again and everything will just start producing again so it should be good for us i think but most importantly we're getting coal and as you can see this is being ejected and launched over here and well we've already got 1.3k coal so that's pretty good as well and although we're now in a position where we can set up our steam based power station i think that might have to wait till next episode because this has taken absolutely hours come to have a look have you jeff okay have a look around feel free just don't get in any trouble We're back in FTB Skies, and in this episode, we finally build our steam power plant, which will hopefully provide all the energy we need moving forward. That means we can demolish our big boy water wheel monstrosity, and we then proceed to actually undo all the work from last episode and rearrange it to make things look nicer. We then expand our factory to the second floor to master the next step in our ore processing, and then make the whole thing look nice. Strap in, it's gonna be a monster. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm very excited about today's episode. We're gonna be doing some very cool things, mainly getting my power station up and running, and I'm very much looking forward to that. One, because it means we can get rid of this monstrosity, and two, because it means we can reorganise our factory. And you may notice it's a little bit bigger than it was at the end of last episode. And that's basically just me working out what else we need to process here, and I won't go into too much detail now, because as I say, we are going to be redoing all of this, but essentially I'm just sort of crushing down gravel into sand, and sand into dust, and then sifting both of those as well. But we'll get to that later in the episode. For now, we need to focus on this power plant. So I need to build myself a nice big platform. We've got loads and loads of coal, so that's not going to be a problem for fuel and i need to make myself loads and loads of copper things such as this tank thing here we need to make a steam engine as well and then we're going to need some pipes and pumps and all sorts going on so i guess we're going to be processing a whole bunch of the copper we've got but luckily we've got absolutely loads over there so i'm going to make up all the things we need and then we can just crack on with the build and get this thing pumping out some power so i smelted some copper smashed them into plates and we got to work making all the components i'd need for the power plant i then put in a quick foundation and now i think we're good to start working out this build so although I've not built one of these before, I've done a little bit of research and I do have an idea on what I want to do. And that's going to start with just marking the center of this area here. And then we need to mark where we're going to have the actual power plant bits, I guess. So let's get some more blocks. That'll be useful. So if we give them a bit of space like that, that should work. So we're actually going to have four plants initially, which means we're going to be using 16 blaze burners. Although I, I suppose I might only have one up and running to begin with, at least until we get some power going and then we can always activate the other two. But I think I'm going to get all four built up now. So let's start with this one here. And what we want to do is just get the four blaze burners down. And then we want to build a fluid tank on top of this. And I think we're going to make this eight tall. But that should enable us to have eight of these engines on the side of it. In fact, I think I might raise them up a little bit higher. They're going to get a bit crowded down here otherwise. And there we go. They look like they're all connected so they should all turn together so what i need to do now is to hook up water and what i've got is this which is a kitchen sink which is from the cooking for blockheads mod but that's basically an infinite water source so in theory if we put a mechanical pump on there and then use the wrench so it takes water out and what that should do is basically fill this up although this is going to need energy so for now i think i'm just going to quickly use a hand crank just to get the thing started let's give it a go oh yep look at that go straight in there and it's already producing power look at that and this is without the blaze burners even having food that was very brief okay it's run out of water already okay so once we actually get this cranking in properly that should be good so i guess what i need to do is to connect up all of this power and sort of work out where it's going to come out and then feed some of that back into this area so once it does start it can just keep itself going so let's see if i can work that out next well it's not the prettiest thing in the world but that should work for now so in theory if we hand crank this to get it started hopefully it should start powering itself there we go looks like it's working well that needs to be faster okay let's speed this up and i guess giving these guys some coal would actually be a good thing as well wouldn't it but let's quickly get some speed on this thing i think first look at that that is filling up nice and quickly, it's creating loads of power. 65,000 stress units, that's amazing. So now this is working, what we need to do is automate feeding the blazes. And what we're going to use for that is some depots. We'll only set up this side for now because we only need the one mechanical arm, so we'll get that there as well. And then what I need to do is to link up this arm to these blaze burners like this. And also link it to this spot here, so it should take from there and put them in there. At least that's the hope. And it's on round robin, which means it will put 
put one in each and just keep going round and round for as long as it can. Now we just need to hook it up to the power. And thankfully, we've got some right here, so this should be fairly easy. And this is just dangerous now. Let's get rid of the hand crank. Why you no do what you're supposed to do? What have I done wrong? So I think it was going too fast. I've just slowed it down, and it seems to be kind of doing its thing. It filled one of them, at least. Let's just watch him and see what he does, because this one here is getting quite low. Patiently waiting. Is he going to do his thing? Oh, he is. And he did indeed put it into that one. Okay, so he is working. He's just not overloading them. Smarter than I thought, this mechanic alarm. But now that's working, we can duplicate this over here and again on these two sides as well. And we will have all the power. Let's get it done. We are just about done. Look at that mess. Isn't that wonderful? So I did actually do a little bit more research and I did it better this time. And if I just quickly chuck a little bit of coal into this one here, we're just going to make sure that all of these are fired up. So when they're running at max power, we have a look at the boiler status at the top and it says it's level four. That means it can only power four engines. I need to actually feed these with blaze cakes to get the other four, but that's not a problem. It just means that we've got 16 engines, which is actually quite a lot because each one of these is producing 65 and a half thousand stress units. So if I take a moment and quickly fill up all of these, and we have a look at our stressometer around the corner here, we're creating just over a quarter of a million stress units, which is absolutely loads when this thing's at full power. But for now, well, we don't really need much power at all, because I'm about to strip out this factory here, and that's the only thing that's using power at the moment. And from the outside, the building's looking pretty good as well. I've even added a lift to the side. So if we jump on and push that button there, this is going to take us up to the top. Once again, it's running very, very slowly at the moment, but that's because the power station's not really up and running with the coal. And this button here will send it back down, which is marvellous. And from up here, we can just kind of see all the mess that's going on. And lastly, I have also routed some power around the back here. We still need to sort out out the front here, but I think I need a break from this. And what I'm going to do is get all of this old factory ripped out, get rid of this monstrosity, and clear a space ready for this rebuild. And I have also planned ahead and emptied all the vaults as well, so everything is now in our main storage, as you can see by the 108,000 cobble we've got. That is a lot of cobble. Well, considering how long that took to put up, it all came down in about five minutes or so. But we do have a fresh new canvas. We're going to put down a whole new platform. We'll put a new foundation in for our factory. It's going to pretty much stretch the entire length of this area here. And hopefully it will look a little bit nicer this time around. But you have seen me build all these machines before, so I'm going to crack on and get it done. And I'll bring you back in once at least the bottom floor is looking pretty good. And then we can actually get the top floor on and start making some new machines. Kind of miss him now he's gone. Well, it's the next day in real life, and I may or may not have been up until 3 o'clock this morning building and then rebuilding this factory. But eventually, I did get a layout that works. So let's go take a closer look at what's going on down here. So I'm not going to go over each individual machine here because, well, basically, they're all the same. They're just repeated. But it's fairly straightforward. Essentially, this is just our cobble storage facility. We have a bunch of pillars underneath that are just keeping this full up. And as you see, it's got about 10,000 cobble in there at the moment, which is marvellous. And then this is getting fed into a crushing machine. So all the cobble goes into these funnels and then tunnels. The tunnel splits them evenly over both of these conveyor belts. They then get crushed. The resulting gravel in this case comes out and goes into this small vault over here. The gravel can then be pulled out the front and then go into the next one to turn into sand and then sand into dust and so on. And they all do the same thing. It does, of course, have a couple of cool features. So up here we have a threshold switch. So this is the thing that checks the stock level and then turns the machine on and off when needed. And then we have a display panel. And this basically has a couple of display links, which are these green things here. And I'm just telling it to take the container fill level, convert it into a percentage and display it online too and that's exactly what's happening here and we're also getting the name gravel from this one here because it's just looking at what's on the depot and lastly we have the mechanical arms which you may notice are currently turned off we'll turn those on in just a moment but what they're doing is they're taking the gravel the sand or the dust and putting it onto these conveyor belts at the top this all then gets bought over here split into all the different strainers and then yeah we just have a whole array of strainers here and then all of the goods from the strainers go over here and into this vault and that it's basically everything. Hopefully that wasn't too overwhelming. Why don't you explain what that is to the, so they can understand? 
Yeah, just well, explain you, what that is. Explain what you think that is. Okay. Just explain that. Basically, we're making sand, gravel, cobble, and dust over here, and then we're sifting it over here and storing it in this one here. Magic. Got it. Which, sadly, we don't have a title for because I need to put a custom title on there for, like, shiny things or something like that. But for that, I need a name tag, and I cannot seem to find one for the life of me. I've been using this really nice rod, but, yep, still no, uh, still no name tag. Hopefully, we'll get one soon, though. So now we've got the factory at this stage, what I need to do is take a look inside this vault. Because, yeah, you can see at the top there, there's some stuff that we do want to keep in the factory. And there's other stuff we can just shift off into storage. So what we can do is just grab this storage scanner. In fact, let's put it in the right place. That might be helpful. There you go. We'll just plonk that down in front. And if we set this to just do a radius of two, excellent. And now we can see everything that's in the vault and a couple of things that have made their way in that really shouldn't have done. So what we need to do now is to create some filters because we want the ores to stay here and we want everything else to go into storage. Even the diamonds and emeralds, they can go off to storage now because there's no further processing required. But everything else, I think we just want to bin it off. But you haven't seen this thing in action yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the threshold levels on this. Now we know what we're going to be doing with it. So let's get this all the way up to 80% or in fact, let's go 90. So once it gets to 90% full, it will turn off and we'll move up the lower threshold to let's go 60. And then we click the tick and look at that. It should now all be coming on. So all the mechanic alarms are working. Look at that. They're grabbing the stacks from here. They're putting them on the conveyor belt. They're all getting bought over here, pulled into the funnels, and then it's all getting sifted and dumped onto the conveyor belts. Just look at all this stuff coming in. I have to say, I do love watching this thing work. So there's actually 30 items in that vault. There's 21 we don't want to keep. There's nine we do. So next step, let's get some filters in. And I might spend a bit of time actually making the ground floor of this factory look a little bit nicer as well, because we're almost ready to move on to the second floor, which is where we're going to be processing all of these different ores. Well, I've made some progress. I've got the filtering sorted over here which is looking lovely we've basically got these two mechanical arms that just take everything out of this vault here and sort it into these drawers and look how much stuff we've got there's so much going on in there and that 86 percent is all just ores which is amazing because we're almost ready to send them up to the next floor and i've also discovered these cool trapdoor frames which you can actually click with any block and then it applies that texture to it but I actually just kind of like them for barriers in this factory here. I think they're going to work quite nicely. It's all starting to come together. So I've also added these redstone switches here because most of the ore actually comes from gravel. So I kind of wanted to have control over these mechanical arms so that even when this is empty, although it has activated them over here, I've got my own little control panel. So if, for example, I'm like, OK, let's go sift some dust. I can do that. And then the arm starts going. Dust goes across. Then the dust is going to get sifted. All the goods go into the vault. And then the arms around the back here, look at this, look at them go. They're sorting it all out and they're putting everything into these drawers here. In fact, we can get a better view of that if we go around the back here. And there we go, we see our mechanical arms hard at work. So each of them has basically been assigned sort of half the wall and the middle just overlaps between both of them. And they just grab things off these conveyor belts, put them in their home. And I just, I love them. I think these things might be the best part of the game. But we've got way too much of that sort of stuff anyway. I mean, look, we've got 13,000 redstone. We're never going to use that. So as I say, I, I can sort of control them individually. And if I just want the gravel to be sifted so that we're only getting ores coming through, that's an option I've got, which is great. So I've also made a small contraption over here in the power plant. Basically, I was sick of making andesite casings. So now I can just put logs here. They get stripped on the saw, and then they get hit with an andesite alloy by the uh, deployer here. And then that just creates all of the andesite alloys I could need, which is great because I'm using them for loads of stuff. So the next step is going to be to get the second floor in, and that means we can actually make a start on grinding down the raw ore. And from that, I believe we're also going to get XP, which is good. And then we'll get the crushed ore, and then we'll need to wash the crushed ore, and that's going to finally give us the ingots that we need. In fact, it's going to give us nuggets. So I guess we're going to have to compress the nuggets into ingots as well. And we've got nine different ores coming out of this to do that for, so that's going to be quite the challenge to fit that up there. Let's see what we can do. All my fishing i've still not found an item tag and that makes me very sad but i think i've got an idea of how we might solve that which we'll test in just a moment but as you can see i've made some good progress on the factory i've got this lovely little platform out the front here so we'll probably just stack up some ores on this side we've got the walls in which are definitely in all around the building we just don't need to talk about the back it's absolutely fine and we've started making some progress upstairs there's something i want to try over here because we can't get ourselves a name tag but 
well, we can make these things read off of depots. So I do wonder if I put a custom named item on the depot, so I've called that raw ore, is this going to work? Well, it's not going to work if I do that. Let me link it to the right thing. So we need to link it to that board. Link it to there. Item name, line one. Okay, in theory, this should work. It does. Okay, excellent. So we don't need an item tag. I can stop fishing, which makes me very happy. I've spent about two hours fishing with absolutely no joy so far. But I think this is looking pretty good now. The die does help as well separate the title from the percentages. But anyway, right, let's have a look upstairs. So what are we doing? We have all the ore coming up here. It comes in three different tracks. These three tracks then go over here, and they go into all of these tunnels. My plan here is then to put filters on the front, so we'll have raw iron, raw gold, raw osmium, and so on, going all the way down for the nine different raw ores. So they'll all come up here, they'll go into these crushing wheels. So we have a line of nine crushing wheels there. That's going to put quite a lot of stress on the system, but with our power, that shouldn't be an issue. All the crushed ore is then going to drop onto these conveyor belts and go into the tunnels, but because we can also get XP from this, I have added these tunnels so we can once again filter out all the crushed ores on the front and then we can just filter the xp out the side and store that somehow somewhere we'll figure that out later so at this stage we're going to have the nine different types of crushed ore coming in on these nine conveyor belts and there's still two more steps before we've actually got this fully processed and we don't have a lot of space to do it in so the first thing we need to do is get some encased fans in and we need to wash the ore so we need to raise it up and drop it in front of the fans so let's get that bit sorted first so I think I've got this all worked out. And I'm actually going to blast them and just smelt them directly after this point, I think. Because if I wash them, I'm also going to get redstone. And believe me, I really don't need any more redstone. So what we're actually going to do is just stick lava in here. And that will cook them and then store them in a vault is probably the best idea. Let's build another vault. All right. So in theory, this whole thing should, I say should, work. However, I do still need to figure out what's going to happen with the XP. But we'll wait until we've got it up and running first and figure that out from there, I guess. I guess and of course i need to add power because we don't have power on any of this so far like absolutely none of it so let's figure out that bit next power is now in and i'm just checking to make sure it's all doing the right thing they're spinning the right way okay we're looking pretty good i think everything apart from these actually we need to get those hooked up but other than that i think we're all good i do want to make sure i get the filters on before we go too far with this though so let's grab the bits we need for that so that's all those filters in we should be good it looks like i'm going for a ride hey all those filters are in now now i guess we had some lava and hope for the best right in fact before we do that i'm just going to chuck loads of stuff on here and get some crushed stuff going and hopefully we can see this whole thing kind of working. We should end up with loads of crushed ore just bunched up over here because it shouldn't be able to get in there. In fact, we should probably get power to those conveyor belts as well first. Are they going the right way? Yep. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So let's chuck some ores on and see what happens. So this doesn't seem to work for extracting the XP. So I guess that's the thing we're going to need to solve. How do we sort out the XP? Hmm, I've got an idea. Well, that seems to work. We just need to actually send that somewhere now, I guess. Wow, that is a lot of experience. Yep, yeah, that was about five levels of XP there, and that was only nine stacks of ore. This is going to be an amazing XP farm. So what do we do with the XP? I wonder if this would work. An experience obelisk. So how does this thing work? I can add experience into it. Does it pick up anything that's on the floor? No. So it looks like I can use an absorption hopper to collect the nuggets of experience. Uh, what do I do now? Oh my days, what is going on here? Okay, so this isn't converting it into liquid. It's just picking up my XP orbs. This is not what I wanted. I think I've kind of solved it. Kind of. But look how full that thing is already and I barely even touched it. So yeah, it looks cool but it's not really a long-term solution. So my solution is a little bit manual. So this thing here is gradually going to fill up, which is absolutely fine. Then that's going to fill up, which is fine. And lastly, over here, we just have this little vault, which is mainly just so I can actually get the XP orbs up nice and high so I can move them. But this vault here is the one that's got the stock indicator. And when this gets full, this will actually turn off the ore processing down here. At the same time, the ingots vault over here is also linked up to this one here. So if this gets above 90%, that will also turn this off. So once again, everything's all linked together and things will just get created as they're needed. But you may notice I've made a small change over here as well. I realized I'd massively over-engineered it. So we've actually just got nine fans over there blowing this way now. And everything's getting cooked by about this sort of point here. Generally, stuff gets finished. But also the speed is keeping up nicely over here. So things are backing up. If anywhere, they're backing up here. 
and then they're going up the top here getting ground and so on but we could speed this up if i was to change how much stuff is coming out down there then it would make this a bit faster but currently we're only doing three at a time and that's mainly because we don't really need it to be any faster i mean already look we've got over a thousand of nearly every ingot so yeah we certainly don't need to worry about that what we do need to worry about however is actually sorting these out but that's not a problem for today that's a problem for another day but enough about the ores we know that's working the xp how are we turning it into liquid so as i say what we've got is it's all getting stored up in this vault here it's already got 3.4k oh okay so it looks like it can hold about 100k that's good that's a lot more than i thought but the way i've done it is i've got a depot here and obviously every time i take a stack another stack's going to appear and i can just do this and that will apply the xp to me and as you can see we're getting absolutely loads of it considering that was only five stacks but then what we're doing is we've got these things here which are xp drains so if i stand on these they go all sparkly sparkly and as you can see it's stealing all of my levels if we then go into free cam and have a look at what's going on we have pumps underneath that is pumping out all of the fluid xp it's going across all these pipes which are that long i've actually had to put in booster pipes as well and there we go it's already emptied all the levels i had on me and then that's pumping into this tank here which is great because it looks awesome but well, I mean, it, it's pretty much just going to be aesthetic. I don't think that's going to be particularly useful, but I think it's safe to say the majority of our XP is just going to be stored in this vault here. But we have made some epic progress today. We've got our power station up and running. We've got all the ore processing and actually getting turned into ingots. Next step is going to be, obviously, to get these sorted out and stored a bit nicer. We've got plenty of space over here in the factory still as well, which is nice. But yeah, I think I think that's about where we're going to wrap it up today. It's been a long one and my brain hurts. Bye-bye now. This time on FTB Skies, we finish off Mega All Processing Factory, both inside and out, build a giant new island and start our space program. Yep, we're going to space. So what now, what now? And I can't wait. I've always wanted to go to space, but we'll get back to that later. First off, I need to get this factory finished. And between episodes, as you can see, I have done a little bit of work here. We've added another XP vault. It's a fluid tank, not a vault. Good start. But we have added another fluid tank here, and we've also got these taps on the front, so we can actually use them. And, well, I'm, I'm not really keen on the uh, on the shading on these, but they do the job. It's fine. And if we go inside, we can see we now actually have walls all the way around. We even have them at the back here. And I've used a few varieties of spruce wood to sort out the walls up on this side here. Besides that, I've just tidied up a few other things, like this control panel here, so we've got everything labelled so we can see what's what. And we've also got a factory kill switch now, which when I flick that, it literally turns off the entire factory, just in case we ever need to conserve some power. And up Upstairs here, you can see this has all turned itself off. Our vault is full over here. And I guess we're going to start off today by sorting this out. But I need to sort it out in such a way that we can keep producing iron, even if all the other ingots get full. And I think I've got an idea. So what I'll do is I'll drag everything out of the current vault, and I'll use mechanical arms to sort it all out into drawers. Besides the iron, of course, which will have a giant vault and its very own belt. We'll add a copper upgrade and a void upgrade to each drawer, so after the first 20k or so, the arms can still feed the ores in, but they'll just get destroyed, which will keep the ingot vault clear of clutter and allow iron to flow through. It's looking like this is going to work a treat. So all the iron ingots have been going into here and everything else is getting sorted into the drawers here look at that marvelous there is however one more thing we need to do before we can call this factory complete besides actually putting a roof on it and finishing the decoration and that is to create steel which is something we're going to need loads of in the future and for that we're going to have to take a look at the mechanism mod so let's have a little gander shall we and all we actually need is what looks like pretty much the first step here we just need a metallurgic infuser and what we need to do is feed iron ingots into the infuser, which will give us enriched iron. And then with the enriched iron, we can turn that into steel dust. And then we need to cook the steel dust, and that will give us steel ingots. And that's basically what we need to try and do in this tiny area over here. So let's see what we can do. And I think something like this should just about do it. So the first challenge we actually had over here was converting rotational power into FE. So I had to make myself an alternator. But then it gave me some pipes, and I just plugged them into the back of the metal things. And now they seem to be powered which is marvellous. So the iron comes out of the vault here, goes into the first infuser and gets converted into enriched iron. It then gets converted in here and turned into steel dust, which if we get over the front here, we can see then drops out the front and then gets cooked by these fans and goes into this wonderfully large vault. These infusers also need coal though, so I've also got a mechanical arm just grabbing coal here. And this is actually the same coal that we're feeding over to the power plant. I've just kind of moved where it all happens. And yeah, now we're actually splitting some of the coal here and some of the coal goes over to power. And the good thing is because we've burnt through all the ingots, sorting them into the drawers here while we're fiddling around with this, we've actually had all the other machines turn on as well because, well, we needed more ore in the one down here and then that needed more gravel and basically everything's just turned on and everything's working as it should be. Apart from the fact that it's a tiny bit framey over here now, but that's fine. It's only when all the machines are on. So I think we've got 
all the machines in this particular factory that we need for now. And that means I can actually get a roof on this thing, get the interior sorted out, and basically just get the whole thing looking nicey-nicey. So I'm going to mess around with this for a little while, and hopefully when I bring you back in, we'll be ready to start our space program. Well, it turned out there was a lot more to do than I expected, but I think we're actually done here with this factory, and it's looking beautiful. So in fact, I'm going to quickly jump into free cam here for a little bit while we have a look at the outside. It's just a little bit easier. So we've got some of the XP leaking out. We did actually end up pretty much filling these things completely until I bucketed some out and put it here. But I think that adds a nice little bit of detail to the island round here. And we did, of course, have to build up more island because, well, this factory was overhanging by a decent chunk. So we've added in some more bits around the bottom here and just expanded out the back. And of course, we've added this platform round the side here which you probably saw in the quick time lapse there and that platform there actually leads down to another tiny little island which i'll explain in a moment but it is there for a reason and then if we have a closer look down the front here we've got a conveyor belt that's sort of taking iron across it's not really needed but i thought it looked quite nice and of course we've got all the oars and bits like that down here as well although i do need to put something in this sign i forgot about that we'll put a copper sheet for now it's fine that's kind of representative of what we're doing in here i guess and on the inside we finally have a roof a massive roof that's not really that very well supported if i'm honest but it's fine just don't look at it too closely and we've also added a door out the back because our new island's going to be going around here somewhere but we'll get to that shortly and when we go upstairs we have the main information board so i've actually just pulled all the information from the different machines into one place so at a glance we can see exactly what our stock levels are for absolutely everything and i've added a network stress thing here as well so we can see how much power we have in total how much is being used and most importantly what we've still got available and we've still only got two out of the four stacks in the power station running so plenty of stress available for future projects and i've actually used these feral lanterns here hanging on chains for lighting because what they do is they randomly kind of spring up light sources around the area and it means i haven't got to spam absolutely everything with lights and to be honest i think they look quite industrial as well so i like those i also finished off the path around the side here which goes onto this walkway and we've added in an elevator here which does work and works much better than the first one we built over the other side by our base and this takes us down to this area here. And the reason we're here, if you look on the right hand side, this is actually a lukewarm ocean biome. And I thought that maybe if I was fishing in an ocean biome, I might have a bit more luck. I mean, naming those signs still would be a whole lot easier with a name tag. But then I fished for about half an hour so far, and I think we've actually probably had worse loot. I wonder if I need to make the lake a little bit bigger. I mean, it's more of a puddle, isn't it? To be honest, I can't really call that a lake barely even a pond but now with all of that done we can make a start on our space program by which i mean we can build a giant island for the next 12 hours for our space program because yeah we're gonna need a lot of space for this and i think what i want to do is add another island in out the back here but i want to have it raised up a little bit probably sort of level with the roof of this almost but you don't need to see me build another island so i'm just gonna go in here and then i'm gonna go like this a little bit and then when i go back out you'll see that it's actually already finished which is marvelous and we've even put in a little bridge across the top here with power going through as well so that island does indeed have power too and for some reason pigs just keep spawning up over there and also down there i don't know why i mean look at them there's loads of them well, let's go have a closer look at this island so as i say we have got a bridge in which is accessible via the top level of this warehouse it seemed like the best way to connect these two islands and if we go up here you can see just how much space we've got and look at the size of this thing absolutely massive and i have also looted a jetpack from a local village which has got limited hydrogen but it has been very handy with building this island so i guess we have to figure out how to make hydrogen at some point but if we jump into free cam and have a look at this island we see we've got lots of space we've got three different biomes as well by the looks of it and i've also added a couple of additional floating islands here as well and if we come over by the windmill we can see that the island height actually works really well as well in fact you can just see me standing there in front of the sun i think once we get some buildings up on here that's going to look really good and just give a little bit more variation to the area. But now we have this land, we need to figure out what it is we actually need to do with it. And for that, I guess we're going to be jumping back into the quest book here. So if we have a look at exploration here, we do need to... Well, we haven't actually done these things, although we have found nether sky villages and sky villages. We haven't actually made these things, so I guess we should complete those as well. But we then need to make an Eye of Legend and get to the end. And the only way to do that, it seems 
is to basically start a space program. And we can get to the end over here, which is technically an asteroid belt, apparently. But essentially, there's loads of dimensions. We can go to the moon. We can go to, like, Venus and Mars and all sorts. And to kick it all off, we need to make ourselves a NASA workbench. And this is why we needed steel. But if we're going to start doing sciencey things, I should probably look the part. There we go. Much better. So I guess the first thing I'm going to do over here is just build a small platform to start experimenting on. I really don't know what this is going to entail. I don't know how much space I'm actually going to need. And I have no idea what the buildings are going to look like. So I think just a small stone platform and we'll route some power over there as well should hopefully help get us started. And of course, we'll need to build that NASA workbench. I've slapped down a stone slab and I've bought power over here. So we have rotational power from the main power plant. And I'm also converting a bunch into FE as well. That's going super fast and we're getting 180 FE per tick for each one of these. So that hopefully that'll be enough to get us started. I literally have absolutely no idea how much power we're going to need over here. But more importantly, we've now got this, which is our NASA workbench. And this is very confusing. It's for building rockets. That's all I know at this stage. So I need to dig around in the quest book and do a little bit more research. And the first part of that is going to be completing this. And that's going to give us a book. Okay, cool. Well, I guess I'm going to be reading for a bit. So the book tells me the first thing I need to do is to build a launch pad and to build myself a rocket. And having a look around, I just need to make all of these parts, all of these things I have fairly easy access to, thanks to all the steel we've got. Although I do need to make something to make these iron rods, because it looks like we're going to need quite a lot of those so let's get a little quick rolling machine in here shall we there we go that should do the trick so in theory if i grab myself some iron i should just be able to get those rolled look at that iron rods easy as that so now we have those coming in i just need to make myself a whole bunch of steel plates and a whole bunch of iron plates but we already have something set up for that over at the power plants so let's just chuck a bunch of them in there so we should have everything we need let's try and build our first rocket so we need some of these we need one of them we need one of these we need a steel engine wonderful so we have this steel engine we have the rocket fins we have the tank and we have the nose cone is there anything else we need? Because we've got the blocks already as well. Oh, of course, we need a launch pad as well. So let's build ourselves one of those. Wow, this thing's huge. What's going on here? Okay, I see. It's actually very, very large. So let's see if we can construct our first rocket. So we put that in there. Then we put those in. We put fins on either side. We put one of them at the bottom. And I think we probably need another steel tank. Yes, we do. We need one more of those. So let's get that in there as well. And there we go. We have our first rocket. Look at that. Did we just place that on there? Wow, it's huge. Oh, that is so cool. And we can get in it as well. Excellent. So this actually looks very, very cool. But we're not done yet. We can't go into space because we also need to make ourselves an oxygen loader. But it looks like we should have what we need in order to get this done. There we go. That's our loader, although it does look like it takes power. And oh my, this looks confusing. Right, what does this need? Back to the book, I guess. So let's see. If we just plug that into the power there for now. And it says if we put water in the left tank. Okay, yep, that's going in. And it's converting it to oxygen. So do we put a tank in there to get... Okay, so that oxygen tank now has 100 oxygen in it. I see. So I guess that's how we're going to breathe in space. Something like that. But as we don't want to die of exposure, we also need to make ourselves a space suit. What do we need for this? Pretty much just glass and wool on top of all the steel we've already got. Oh yes, look at that. Now that is a space suit. Although as you can see in the top left, I have absolutely no oxygen in it. So that's not ideal. So we can get oxygen into our space suit by placing it in here. But we need to make this a little bit more useful, which means we need an infinite water source we need to pump all that in and of course we need to make it look nice but we now have our spacesuit we have our rockets we just don't really have a very good looking lab do we so i think what i'm going to do is put in a bit of time to sorting this out getting these machines all looking nice and making this place look a little bit more like a space lab at least on the inside i think on the outside i still want it to look like it fits in with everything else so i guess it's gonna be a super secret space lab i think i feel a building montage coming on
enough of the time lapse. I think we're ready for a tour. And it's only enough of the time lapse because I may or may not have forgotten to hit record for the last bit of the build. So you didn't see me build these wonderful doors. Sorry about that. But I can still show you around and show you what's going on in here. We've been having a wonderful time. So I've basically just made a massive warehouse, which if we actually look at from the outside, I think still fits in with all the islands nicely. It still needs some pipes and details and things like that. But the most important thing is, of course, this roof fan up here. I had a lot of fun making that, and I think it just works really well. But on the inside, we basically have the machines that we already had before. There's only one new one, which we'll get to in a moment. But this is our oxygen producer. So we actually have two of the loaders. This one here is producing oxygen and pumping it into these tanks either side. And then when we want to fill something up, we just use this one here, and this will just pull through all the oxygen from either tank. So I shouldn't think we're going to run out of that anytime soon. And the other machines we've added here are, of course, our plate maker, so we can make all the steel and copper plates and whatnot that we need and we've got the rolling machine over here as well so we can make all the iron rods i also figured it would be wise to show our network stress over here so we can see what we're using and as you can see we're actually very very close to completely maxing it out so we should probably go light the other uh, the other stack to be honest we've only got one running at the moment and we've also just got a crusher and an infuser here as well just because i needed to make some bits and bobs for this which is our hydrogen generator so what we're doing here is we're pulling in water and that is generating hydrogen and oxygen this is just getting done in fact, now it's getting dumped all the way because we don't actually need this type of oxygen. This is sort of mechanisms liquid oxygen. This is the one we need for tanks. And then we've got two condensers. This one here actually condensates. Yep, that's definitely a word. It condensates the hydrogen and turns it into liquid hydrogen. That then gets pumped into either tank. And then this bottom one here is actually a decondensator and it's doing it the other way around. So we're turning the liquid hydrogen back into actual hydrogen so we can use it. And then I can actually refill my jetpack now, which is great because it means we can use this all the time. I have absolutely no idea if hydrogen has any other uses, but I just wanted to be able to refill my jetpack, okay? And then lastly down here, we have, well, of course, the big sign for BASA, which is Beardy's Average Space Agency. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. But this is our rocket construction zone, which I expect will fill up over time because there are numerous rockets we need to make as the journey goes on. But we've also just got an array of armor stands at the back here. So we have our spacesuit, we have our jetpack, and this is another type of jetpack. I think this is the mechanism one. I've not actually used that yet. This is a backpack from Create. I have no idea what that does, but it looked pretty cool. And we also have a scuba tank on this one, just because it's a thing that goes on an armor stand and works fine. So this is where we're at with our development of our space program so far. Although there is actually one more thing, which are these doors here, which I've made open really slowly, painfully slowly, but I do love that they work. And then we just got like a little road up here, and I guess this is going to go to some kind of a launch pad or something. I don't know. I haven't really planned anything out. We'll see what happens. I did actually try to set up a create gantry so we can pull the rocket out as well, but sadly these two things here can't actually stick to anything create and cannot be moved which is a shame because that would have looked awesome i've still got some work to do on the outside as you can see we need to get some pipes and stuff on the side of the building i need to get some foliage and greenery maybe some trees around the back but i'm really pleased with how that's looking and look at our giant island kingdom this place is massive oh my days look at all the pigs there are so many pigs what am i supposed to do with all those pigs well that's gonna have to be a problem for next episode because that's all we've got time for today and i'll see you on the next one where hopefully we'll actually get into space which will hopefully be less dangerous than here. This time on FTB Skies, we build a plastic processing plant, skip through a magical garden, and strike oil on an island that didn't even exist last week. But that's impossible! And between episodes, I've been scheming and building. Scheming and building. On the building side, I've just added a little bit of storage here inside our warehouse, and outside I've added a wonderful little launch pad area so we can launch all of our rockets from here, and I've just embedded the building a little bit better into the landscapes. We've sorted out the exterior, we've planted some trees around the back and sides, and it's just generally looking a lot nicer. On the scheming side, I've built a big old board, and I've worked out what we need to do to get oil, which we're going to need for rocket fuel if we're ever going to get to the moon. And let me tell you, it's not a short journey but don't panic, I'm not going to go through all of it with you here. In fact, I think let's do this step by step. And step one is this big old chain here, which is to get plastic. And to get plastic, we're going to need to build ourselves some kind of a plastic processing plant. And that's what this big old area here is. Well, it's about three hours later and we built this thing three times, but it is actually now working. And I was just editing the footage for it. And basically it was just really, really boring. And I don't want to bore you. So instead of going into detail about all the different components over here and what we're doing, 
We're going to do a very quick overview. Let's see if we can do this in 10 seconds. So over here, we're using fluid extractors to get liquid latex from these logs. And we've got block places that replace the logs when they die. All the liquid latex gets pulled into this tank over here. The liquid latex from the tank then gets pumped into the latex processing unit. And we get these tiny rubber balls. The tiny rubber balls then get sent into the mechanical press and turned into dry rubber, which then gets spat out and cooked by the lava. And this gives us plastic. And that explanation felt much more precise than whatever was going on in my previous edit. But it's basically a four-step process and now we have all the plastic we need and I've also added a dissolution chamber which is also dragging some latex out of this area here and that's because we needed that to add speed upgrades because this thing was actually very very slow so each one has a tier 2 speed add-on and well it's making it much much quicker I'll tell you that much so it might look a bit messy I'll probably tidy it up at some point but for now we're generating plastic and that is step one done so I can remove all these signs and feel really good about myself step two is to use the dissolution chamber to make a simple machine frame and as I say we do have the dissolution chamber already set up over here so we should be able to get simple machine frames easy enough yep we have everything we need for this recipe although we are going to need to go cook up some netherrack we don't have nether bricks but we can easily make some let's just give this a moment so I'm just gonna stand here and use up these resources make 30 or so of these actually i wonder can i feed items into the hopper will this work i mean it's slower than me putting them in there but it puts the recipe in Excellent. Well, we'll just let that do its thing then. So we're making simple machine frames. That was a nice and quick one. So step three is to get netherite scraps, which we need to get from crushed netherrack. The problem is we can only actually get these scraps if we put them through an amethyst mesh, which means we need a mana steel mesh, which means it's time to make ourselves a fancy garden. We need to jump into Batania because we need to get mana steel, and the only way to do it really is to chuck iron ingots into a mana pool. So we need to create some mana. But when Between Episode Beardy was planning, he knew this was coming. And look at this, we actually have a small new island that I've built over here, round behind the back of our starter island. And this, I think, is where we're going to put our lovely magical garden. So let's quickly head back to storage because there's a few things we're going to need to make to get this started. So the first thing I'm going to need is some floral fertilizers. So we just need four stacks of dye and a stack of bone meal. And look at that, we've got a whole bunch of the stuff. And we're just going to spam our new island with this stuff. We're going to get loads and loads of these mystical floral flowers and that should enable us to get started with Batania. so what are we getting okay so we can literally just just keep spamming look at this loads of the things and thankfully we can vein mine these look at this all the flowers i'm gonna do that a few times just to stock up and now we have a buttload of flowers i should probably find somewhere to store these things i think we'll just dump them in some drawers for now this will do fine and i believe we can craft these down into petals yes that's what we want because we need to make ourselves a pedestal it's not a pedestal it's a petal apothecary that's what we need and i guess we'll just chuck this down over here for now what does this do okay so what we can do is we can mix petals in this thing and that will create other flowers for us which we will then use to make mana but I need to feed water into this thing first so I guess it's time to make another kitchen sink I think what we'll do is just bury this underground and do that and hopefully that's put water in it I don't really know how it works doesn't look like it's putting any water in it am I gonna have to oh man I'm gonna have to do it manually all is not lost. We can at least, I guess, put the kitchen sink down there so we've got easy access to infinite water. And then we need to start mixing petals. I don't know if there's any sort of specific recipes. Should we just try a couple? So if we chuck in a couple of those and a couple of those, is that going to do something? Looks like it's doing something. So the quest book's telling me I should actually be making an endo flame, which is one of those, one of those, and two of those. And I, are we getting some different colours now? And, oh, I need to add, what's that? What's that little symbol there? Is that seeds? I need to add seeds of some kind. That would be why the quest gave me seeds. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, whoa! Okay, that was instant. But now we have an endo flame. Excellent. What does that do? You see, I have done Batania before, but it was about two years ago, and I can't really remember much of anything. So I think I've got the basics all figured out. We're getting ourselves some mana steel. It's uh, it's okay. It's, it's fairly basic, I guess. We have these things called pure daisies, and if we put logs around them like this, we can get ourselves living wood, which is uh, then used to make other stuff. We've only used it to make a wand so far, though. But if we do that with stone, we get living stone, and then we can make mana pools. And these flowers here are burning up these logs, and that's creating mana into this mana spreader, which then shoots at the mana pool. And then we can just drop iron ingots in here and get mana steel, which is great, although it's quite slow. How many of these things do we need? Just before we look at that, though, this is our Batania quest line. We've made it to here. 
I don't think we actually need to do these things just yet, so we're probably going to ignore those for now. As long as we can get mana steel, I'm happy. Although we'll probably be back over here in future to do some other stuff, and we need to make it look nice, of course, as well. Oh, there we go. The wood just turned. Look at that. More living wood that I don't really know what it does. Anyway, we're getting distracted. We need to make mana steel meshes. So that's a nice, easy recipe. We don't need much mana steel at all. So let's just make one of them, which gives us a blacker lotus. What does that do? Apparently, it's just got loads of mana inside it, so... Do we just throw it in here? Well, I can't plant it. I can't eat it. So chuck it in there. Is that just giving us loads of mana? We get loads more of these now. Ooh. Yep, that had loads of mana in it. We've got 45 of these things. Do they have any other uses? I'm sure they do. But now we've got our mana still mesh. We need to upgrade it to amethyst. And I believe we do actually have a budding amethyst. I'm pretty sure we found one in a chest in the nether. Question is, where would I have put it? There it is, budding amethyst. So I guess for now, it's probably going to make sense to put this over here as well. Hopefully we can move it in future if not. So let's just put that there, I guess. What in the world? That thing just came out of the amethyst. Ooh, endstone. So I guess we just kind of need to wait for the amethyst to grow because we need some shards before we can do anything else. And I guess while we wait for that, I might spend a bit of time over here in the garden, see if we can make this place look nice. Well, it might not be the fanciest garden in the world, but it's my garden and I love it. So if we just take a quick look, I've basically just made it a little bit messy. I've used frame drawers so we can actually blend in the drawers with the sort of walkway up to the pedestal. And then I've just gone for a bit of symmetry. So we've got mana pools in every corner. We've got all the mana generating flowers here and here. And I've left these spaces because my theory is there might actually be some other flowers that might be a little bit more useful than these ones because these only generate mana when you're actually burning things. But this should do the trick for when we need stuff in future. At least that's the hope. And I've also got these pedestals off to each side. So I've got one there, one there, and a third one over there. So I can still make living rock and living wood when I need to. Should I ever actually need to anymore? Who knows? But that all looks good apart from this, which is definitely in the wrong place. It is in the way. But we've managed to get ourselves 19 amethyst shards. I've been harvesting this as we've been sorting out the garden it does actually seem to grow quite quick which is nice so we should now be able to make ourselves the amethyst mesh look at that oh it's all purple and nice and we still have this solitary crusher over here so i guess we can just use that for now but we need to put crushed netherrack in there but we don't have any crushed netherrack so we're gonna need to make some of that as well feel like we might be a little bit cramped in here so i'm actually gonna go and move this somewhere else i'm thinking maybe we can find a little bit of space over here we only need something simple for now just to get the netherite coming we can always upgrade it later and i reckon we can probably squeeze something in around here somewhere there we go we've just about managed to cram something in and we're getting all these random things i still don't really know what these triangles are but the main thing we're after is the netherite scraps so they've got a great big box these ones have got void things on them so once they fill up they'll just well, go into the void, I guess. Any excess, so we don't need to worry about that. But it's very simple around here. We've just got some pedestals generating netherrack from these nether bricks. And that's going straight into these little crushers. And then, well, it's getting crushed. And then we're sifting through that. And that's giving us all these drops. And they go into these tunnels, which are then filtered into the right boxes. So a nice, simple system. And that'll do for now. We may upgrade it at some point. But now we've got another big job to do. We need to make pink slime. And for that, we need to make a mob slaughter factory. And once again, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Here. What is going on here? What 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 am I wearing? What? Apparently I had an endermite statue on my face. So we need to make a mob slaughter factory to get pink slime, and apparently slaughtering passive mobs makes for better slime. Where can we possibly find passive mobs? Oh my days! Jeez, I mean for for once we do actually need some passive mobs. But I'm going to need that island there for, for oil later because it's in an ocean and that's where we get oil from. So despite the sheer amount of pigs over there, I think what we might actually do is kind of remake our mob factory that we have in the bottom of the windmill. So I might actually go in there, steal all the delightful dirt, and build another building up here. Maybe put something around here somewhere. There's not a lot of space, is there? I've taken up too much space for me landing pads. But I reckon we can cram a small building in here and we'll put the mob slaughter factory in here, I guess. So it looks like we need to do a little bit more on the industrial foregoing quest chain we kind of need sewers and breeders and all these sort of slaughtery type things and this is what's going to get us over here to the advanced machine frame which is where we're trying to get so i'm going to make a bunch of components and see if we can figure this out so i've made the mob slaughter factory and what it does is it basically destroys any mobs within a range in front of it which by default i think is just one block yep so i have made a massive range tier if we add that and have a look look at that look so that will cover an absolute 
absolutely massive area. We only need it to cover a 5x5 five five area, but that's good. That means we could probably make use of one of these islands, maybe? I wonder. Because what I'm thinking is we could just cover that island in delightful dirt and then put the mob thing down here, maybe, and just pump it straight up into some tanks. And then we haven't even got to put a building down. We can just get away, maybe, with a couple of storage tanks. Let's give that a go, maybe. We just got to find the perfect position for the mob masher. Well, the mobs are disappearing, so I assume it's eating them. Yeah, look at that. We have loads of liquid meat and a tiny bit of pink slime. All right, so knowing this is going to work is good, but the problem is this stuff grows grass every now and then. So can we put something in to maybe flood the island every now and then? We have a tiny amount of space inside. We might be able to fit something in. So I think I've got it all worked out. We've got two timers, both set to 6,000 ticks, but this one should fire about three seconds before this one. So, in theory, it should fire this dispenser twice, and that's just going to deploy a bucket of water and wash away all the bad bads. All this grass. That's what we don't want. Blah. And hopefully that's going to keep the slime coming in for us. But I appear to be very, very hungry, so I should probably go get some food before I kill myself. And then we'll get the rest of this build sorted and get the storage tanks in. And that was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So we're all set up now. We have the meat going into this one, the slime going into this one, and, of course, our island over here, which it looks like it may have actually just been washed. I've had to adjust the shape a little bit just to make sure the water actually spreads out and there we go so now we have a clear thing and it should start spawning loads look at that beautiful work so that was nice and simple i enjoyed that although it would be nice to have a, a record i guess of how much stuff is actually in there but we also need to pipe this over here somewhere because we need to move on to step five and step five is making advanced machine frames and for that we need to use a dissolution chamber again like we do with the normal machine frames i forgot my stairs are on this side let's not talk about that so we need to set up another one of these but instead of latex it wants to have pink slime pumped into it so i guess we can probably just just pump it underground to this spot here and have it sit next to this one that should be easy enough and how's our netherite scraps doing 506 excellent there we go we now have pink slime feeding into a second chamber and now we should be able to make the things that we need and i think the recipe is two of those two of those and lastly two of those yep that appears to be doing the thing let's see if we've got any speed upgrades there we go that should make it much faster so if we just chuck those things in there now that we've locked the recipe that should just go ahead and make loads of these things for us good stuff so step five that was nice and easy wasn't it and that brings us one step closer to getting oil not much left to do and to be honest i think step six is crafting the things that i need step six doesn't exactly roll off the tongue does it but step six should actually result in oil we just need to make a couple of things first so i have my fluid laser base i have my drills and i have some gray laser lenses but i have no idea what to do with them i do know however that if i want oil i need to be in an ocean biome and that's what we're going to use this island for so i'm going to quickly read up on the laser drill and i'll let you know what's going on in a moment so i think i've got it set up correctly however there is a slight problem lukewarm ocean is not one of the biomes i can actually get oil in i need to go to a normal warm ocean and i think we've got one just over here look just just here it's not too far away at all so in theory we might be able to get away with doing it on this island here if we make it a tiny bit bigger Oh, look at that. We might not even need to make it bigger. We might just have to put the tiny, tiny oil rig over here. Let's move it across. Well, it's not pretty, but I've got it all linked up. And hopefully, yes, it's creating oil. A very, very small amount of oil. We need to get some more speed upgrades on this. But at least we know it's working. It's in the right place. We've just got to make this all look a little bit nicer because, well, I don't really want that cable going across. I wonder if there's wireless power. And I guess we're also going to need to transfer the liquid over to the other island somehow as well. So I guess pipes could look quite cool for that. Just really not a fan of these bright red things. Well, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it does the job. It's kind of like a tiny little oil rig jammed on that island. Hopefully I can improve that over time. But we have our oil all being pumped over. And that is now going into this vat over here. And not only that, I discovered we can have wireless power. So I built these things, energy transmitters. So I had to slightly expand my mechanical crafting table. But I built a couple of these. And they basically just send the rotational power wirelessly. And then inside that island, we have an alternator to get FE power. And then we use the spinny power to power the pipes. But this is good. We finally have oil coming in. And that means we're so close to being able to launch our rockets. And also in here, I've just pulled through all the key information. So we have our 
oxygen, hydrogen, latex supplies, as well as slime, meat, which to be honest with you, I have no idea what this is used for. And also, of course, our oil. And we'll have one up here for rocket fuel as well once we start processing that. But that is step six complete, which means we can get rid of the last of our signs. And we really have done a lot today. And I think that's where we're going to have to leave it. But next time, we'll get our rocket fuel and hopefully we'll go to the moon. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye now. In this episode of FTB Skies, it's finally happening. We're going to the moon. Oh, baby, this is it. This is what we signed up for. Which means we need to get everything we need, cram it into this tiny rocket, and hope for the best. And between episodes, Clever Beardstone has found these clipboards, which are a much easier way of me keeping track of what I need to do. And this is essentially just our, our order of events, I guess. We do need to convert oil to fuel, and then we just need to basically pack. But it turns out these clipboards can also be used like name tags to actually name things on these on these signs, which, um, yeah, kind of wish I knew that six episodes ago. But last episode, we did manage to sort out our oil supply, which is coming from this island we built. So where the actual oil is coming from is anybody's guess, really, to be honest. And I've been AFK a little bit, which has collected us all this oil, which is way more than we need. There's 720 buckets there, and I think we need three to get to the moon. But it's not actually oil we need. We need rocket fuel. The question is, how do we make it? I think we need a fuel refinery and a fuel loader. Let's have a little look at this quest line. So it looks like this should be fairly straightforward. I literally just need to make myself one of these and that's quite possibly the simplest recipe i've seen in a long time and there we go we have our fuel refinery i just need to figure out where we want to put this because what we need to do of course is to pump the oil in from this tank over here put it into the refinery and then make a tank of fuel so i do wonder if it should probably just go around here somewhere i think the best thing for me to do might be to add just a couple more storage tanks here in front of this one and use those for the fuel and we can just convert it underground because it literally just needs to go through this thing so yeah yeah, it doesn't need a lot of space, and I don't think there's any need to overcomplicate things here. So let's quickly get a couple of tanks down, and we'll just bury the refinery underground, I think. Got the tanks in, now let's just sort out the piping, shall we? And for that, we just need to get power to this cog here. For some reason, the create pipes won't actually transport this, so I'm going to be using these fluid pipes instead. These seem to work. Yep, there we go, the fuel is going into the tanks. Weird that that doesn't work. But that's now doing its thing, we're pulling the oil out, we're converting it to fuel and pumping it back into the tanks at the top. Now let's see if we can figure out how to use this fuel loader. I seem to be able to pump the fuel out of the tanks and into the fuel loader just fine. The question is, is that doing what it's supposed to do and filling up my rocket? It is! Look at that! So this will automatically fill up the rocket that it's next to. So we've done the first two steps, that's beautiful. Now we need to fill our spacesuit with oxygen. Let's go grab it. So if we put our spacesuit in here, that should fill up just nicely. That was nice and quick. Look at that, beautiful. Even works with the hat. So that's done. Now we need to fill some oxygen tanks. Just so we've got backup oxygen. And I have no idea how many of these we're going to need. So we're just going to do lots. And I think it'll be wise to store a few of these in here. So we've filled the oxygen tanks and we've packed them. Now we need to pack a launch pad and some return fuel. So we'll also put the launch pad in our rocket. And for the return fuel, we're going to need to take buckets. So I think we need one of those create sort of dripper things. You know what I mean. It's a spout if I crouch click that. And we should just be able to connect that up to this pipe here. Just like that. Excellent. And we need three buckets of fuel. So if we just put that there, that should fill up. And we'll get those on our rocket ship as well. Look at that. So we've packed that. Now we just need these other bits here. We've got additional oxygen already. We've got water already. We need to sort out some tools. We need to take glowstone because, of course, there's no oxygen on the moon. So we can't use torches. And we need to make sure we've got a good batch of food. But that's all boring stuff. So I'll bring you back when we're ready for launch. Oh, this is going to be fun. Well, I've made myself some very epic tools. Look at that. I don't even know what half of these things are. But... But most importantly, they've all got very good efficiency and unbreaking, so that should be good. And I've upgraded them to netherite, but I've just discovered I can actually enchant my space stuff. So I'm just going to see what we get on here, I guess. Well, we got some okay enchants, I guess. I don't really know what most of these things do. Increases my step height. That could be handy on the moon. And we've got feather falling as well. Although I'm assuming there's going to be different gravity. I mean, are we really going to need feather falling? Who knows? But I think the last thing for me to do now is to charge up my jetpacks and make sure they're good to go. We've actually got two, so we're going to take both. And then we can launch our rocket and go to the moon. And I'm very, very excited about this. And it looks like our other jetpack is actually an armored one which is nice. Although I have a feeling if we try to wear a jetpack in space, we might die. But we'll take them anyway, you never know. Removing the spacesuit to put on a jetpack might not be the wisest thing. Final check, so we've got our tools done. Oh, I haven't actually gone and got the glowstone and the food yet. That could have been a disaster. So where were we? Food and glowstone. 
Oh, no, I took my jetpack off. I've got my glowstone. I've got my food. So that means we have done our checklist and the moon is just coming up now. So I think we are finally ready to launch. Let's do this. Well, I'm in my spaceship. Look at that. <laughs> Brilliant. Question is, how do I go to the moon? Oh, I press spacebar. Oh, oh, we're going. Oh, how cool is this? We're launching. Woo, we're off. Oh my God, look at that. How cool is that? We're actually flying to the moon. Oh, this is amazing. It's all been worth it. See you later, Island Kingdom. How long does this take? Oh, there's like a little progress bar on the left. What's happening there? Oh, hello. Okay, we're in the solar system. What's this? Look at all these places we can go. Obviously not at the moment, but in future, that is very cool. So we can go to the sky's end, but I don't think we want to go to the end yet. So do we have a look at Earth? And then from here, okay, so we can orbit. We can make a space station. Ooh, that's cool. But I think we want to go to the moon. Okay, I appear to be falling out of the sky. Warning. Why is there a warning? This is cool. Got my own little moon lander. Very awesome. Whoa! I see. So I had a quick look into it, and it turns out you're supposed to hold spacebar as you come into land so that you don't explode on impact, which actually kind of makes sense when you think about it. It's okay, though. Luckily, we have some backup rockets, although I don't think I have any backup spacesuits. So we might need to make a new one of them. No one was ever successful on their first attempt at launching a rocket. So let's grab this. Place a fresh rocket down. Okay. So let's load up some fresh oxygen and a launch pad. And we'll get some extra fuel as well, just in case our other rocket has actually blown up. I mean, it didn't look great, let's be honest. I may have forgotten again that I didn't have a jetpack on. Right, I think we're ready to give this another go. Live and learn. So let's jump in here. And we're getting ready to launch. Fancy shaders and all this time. And off we go. Let's try this again. Whoa, it's shaking loads. Whoa, we didn't come inside last time. Easy on the landing. Easy. Oh, there's stuff on the moon. There's people on the moon. What? Who are they? Hey, I think I think we've landed. There should be should be ground there, but obviously, for some reason there's not. We don't need to go into white. Ooh, look at this. We're floating. Awesome. Right, so can we get our Tombstone, unbreakable. How do I open that? And look at this, our first sunrise from the moon. That looks well cool. It looks like there is some stuff to go check out as well. Okay, so in here we do have our rocket and all of our bits and bobs. This is good. So I guess the first question is what are you? Ah, ah, okay, he's not friendly. Corrupted Lunarian. He's dropping some ice shards. Are these all corrupted? Seems so. But I want to get in my grave. How do I get in my grave? Aha, I got it. I just had to squat on top of it. Excellent. I was getting a bit panicky there. So let's do a quick bit of exploring, shall we? I'm liking the low gravity. Oh, there's a cave here. Should we have a look? So what have we got? We've got moonstone. Oh, we've got another one of these nasty boys. Come here, you. So we're looking for an ore called Desh. That's the main thing we want from this, isn't it? Um... Moon sand, moonstone. Let's just go deeper into the cave and see what we find. Well, I've done some fairly major excavations down here and not found any dash, so we're obviously missing something. Oh, look at that, look, we can see the earth. Of course, that kind of makes sense, but that looks very cool. Question is, where do I find dash? Should we go see what that thing over there is? Oh, there's another structure over there as well. It's actually civilization on the moon? Oh, it looks like some kind of a base. Let's have a look. Axe at the ready. Is this, oh, they're friendly. We have Lunarian Librarians. Reflective defenses. Hmm. Cheese. Don't mind if I do. There's one dash ingot. Better than none, I suppose. This clearly isn't where we need to be, though. Let's go check out the other one. So it looks like more villagers or Lunarians, I suppose they are here. Loads more dash ingots, but this clearly isn't the way we're supposed to be getting them. This looks suspicious, so we're going to explore this a little bit. 
Okay, we seem to have some underground network of tunnels. Look at this. This is what we want. We want the moon dash ore. Oh my days, it's all kicking off in there. What is this thing? Well, you know what they say, third time's the charm. So that's the hole we died down. Let's see if we can retrieve our stuff. Jeez. Well, we got our stuff back. That was easy enough. Question is, do we carry on exploring? This place was dangerous. What's this? Moon glow. I'll take that. I've returned from the depths and we've managed to get 136 raw dash in total from a combination of mining and looting these bits up here. But I think we're pretty much at the end here, and we're going to start running out of oxygen soon as well. So, I think what we're going to do is we're going to head back to Earth, and then we're going to see if we can work out a better way of getting Dash. I wonder if we can automate it somehow now that we're actually on the moon. So long, moon! I'm very confused as to what's going on here. Why has it brought me back to the boat? The good news is, I did pack my jetpack, so I guess we'll land here and see if we can find a way to get home. Can we go through the portal again? What happens if we go through here? Okay, we're just back on our island. This is good. This is good. Well, that was quite the adventure, but I'm glad to be home where it's a bit safer. So I guess I need to sort out my backpack because it's an absolute mess, and then I'm going to figure out what we can do to actually automate getting Dash, if it's even possible. I've sorted out the mess that was my inventory, and I've done a little bit of research. It turns out we can, in fact, automate Dash. We just need some more of the laser drills that we're using over here for the oil. Problem is, they consume a whole bunch of power to actually be effective, which means we're going to need to come up with some kind of a power source on the moon as well. But before we start making everything we need to essentially build a small base on the moon, we've got something very, very important we need to do. And that is, of course, to make a moon rover. And thanks to all the dash we've already got from the moon, we should be able to make everything we need for this. That's the hope anyway. But now we should have everything we need to make ourselves a moon rover. Yes. And if we put this here, it should fuel up. Oh my days, look at the size of that thing. That is cool. And yep, it's fully fueled up. It's got loads of inventory space as well. Oh, this is awesome. Can I pick it up as well? Yes. And is that going to keep its fuel? It does. Okay. Next test, does it keep its inventory when I pick it up? And let's put it back down again. It does. Amazing. Cool. Well, in that case, I'm going to dump a whole bunch of fuel and some oxygen tanks on it. I think that's going to come in very handy for us on the moon. All right. So now we need to build a base on the moon, mainly for these things here. So we need to build an ore laser base. We need to build a whole bunch of drills. And we're going to be powering these with some solar panels. And the problem with that is it takes quite a lot of dash to make each panel. So I guess we're going to be running fairly slow initially because we can't exactly use a water wheel on the moon because, well, the water's just going to freeze. We can't use windmills because there is no wind. Wind. I mean, I could just take a fuel generator, but the problem is that's eventually going to run out. So that's not really ideal either. We could make a bunch of energy batteries and maybe take them with us just so we can at least get a boost at the start and then just kind of use solar panels as a backup. That might be a better option. But for that, we need mineral. What is mineral? Where do we get this from? Right, okay. So if we get a mineral sapling, we can do it. And oh, okay. Yep, we can do that. That's not a problem. So I've got a massive list of things I need to make. So I guess I'm just going to run around the base for a little while. I'm going to make everything we need. And hopefully, once I'm done, we can actually just go back to the moon, build ourselves a little base, and get all the dash we could possibly want. We might build a space station as well. I still want to know what that is. I think we're almost ready with just about everything we need. However, I'm just waiting for the battery to charge up. We've actually upgraded this. It holds 2 million power at the moment. And I'm hoping that we can upgrade that a couple more times before we go. Because I do want to take as much power as possible with me. But creating these mineral chunks is very, very slow. And sadly, I don't have the fertilizer to make it go quicker. I think we're finally good to go. Let's just put some oxygen in my spacesuit. Look at that. Excellent. So we should have everything we need. I think the first thing we're going to do is obviously head off to the moon. But hopefully, we're going to be able to build a space station. At least that's the hope. I love this every time. It never gets old. Off we go. So hopefully... 
Oh, no, we haven't got steel ingots. Dang it. I've got them in my backpack, not on my person. That's annoying. Oh, well, not to worry. We can do it on the return trip. So it looks like we can actually build on the surface anyway. So this is good. I'm just going to build myself a quick little dome, I think. And that's going to be our little house on the moon for now. And I forgot to pick up the battery that I was charging. What a fool. Not a problem, though. We can work around it on this visit then. I guess we're just going to be building our habitat and making sure it's got a supply of oxygen. Well, it's not big, but it's home. So now we need to sort out our oxygen distribution. For that, we need this, this, and this. So let's put that down on the floor. Put the water pump on top and the distributor on top of that. And now we just need to give it some power. And I think for that, we're going to use our solar panels and some of these cables. And hopefully this will do the job. I've not used these before, but we'll see. The solar panel down there. And then hopefully once we get some sun, that'll actually start working. Well, the sun's up. The distributor is distributing, which in theory means I can breathe in here. It doesn't appear to be depleting my spacesuit oxygen anymore, which is marvellous. However, as you can see from the power here, we're not quite getting enough power to this thing. So I think the only sensible thing to do is to get down a bunch more solar panels. Right, hopefully that will be enough. And look at that. We've got loads of power going into that. Excellent stuff. So that was step one. Step two is to set up our laser drill. And to be honest, I think I'm just going to put that in the floor right here. There we go. So everything is now linked up. And this is where I'll be putting the battery. I don't know why I've got five pipes here. I only need the one. So I'm going to put the battery here and that's going to power everything. I don't really want to link it up to the solar panels here because, well, I kind of want to make sure I've always got oxygen. If I'm honest, I don't want to risk draining the power out there and then dying. It just doesn't seem like something that's going to work out, you know? Although something else I do want to do here is actually attach a battery so that, uh, well, it can charge up during the day and then can still be used during the night. Because obviously during the night, we're not going to be producing any power, which means I fully expect this thing through here is probably going to stop working. Well, it seems to be holding up so far. I wonder if it's just got loads stored around the back. So it has occurred to me there's something else I've forgotten, and that is the laser lens. I need to put orange laser lenses in there, and that's what's actually going to produce the dash for us. So I think we might be due a quick trip home because I need to get a bed as well. Basically, my checklist wasn't as thorough as I thought it was. But I think this time I have everything I need in my inventory to actually make the space station. So I guess we'll find out what that is first. Oh, I accidentally clicked on the moon again. I did not click space station. Dang it. And then I got out of my moon lander. This may not end well. So because I got out of the moon lander, it didn't land so much as, uh, well, I, I assume it exploded. And the problem with that is that my rocket was also on the moon lander. So uh, we're kind of stranded on the moon. Well, I guess there's only one thing for it, really. Come on, then. Oh, this is what happens if you go outside without a spacesuit. Okay, so it turns out I still had a bed in the dungeon, so we're going to die all over again. This is not going the way I'd hoped, if I'm honest. Dying in the cold depths of space was not on my to-do list. Right, well, that was all rather unfortunate. Let's see if we can sort ourselves out. Jeez. At least we get to keep our bag when we die. Right, I think we're good to do this again. I've got my battery. I've got loads of the laser lenses. I've got my bed. I think we're good to go. And hopefully we can actually build the space station on the way this time as well. Right, so this time we want to go to the moon and build a space station. Is that going to work? Seems to be. I have no idea what we're going to be landing on. Oh, hello, look at that. Let's go have a look around the space station. Well, it's basically just a room, it would seem. Yep, just seems to be a room, and there's no oxygen in here either, so we're going to have to put in some kind of oxygen circulation system, a bit like we have on the moon, I guess. And this looks like the launch point for getting back out. So, I mean, good that it works, good that we know it exists, and I'm glad I've got a launch pad with me. So let's put that there, let's put our rocket down, and then let's head to the actual moon's surface. I suppose at least now we know what the space station is. Although, if I'm honest, I have no idea what the space station actually is for. We, we, we just know what it is. We know it exists. Right, let's collect our stuff. And now, hopefully, we should be able to put the battery down and start producing things. Let's put the lenses in. I, I, I don't know why I've made six. It's because there's six slots, okay? I don't know if that actually does anything or not, but hey, it's fine. So we need to put this down to Y80 at the most, but let's go a little bit deeper. And hopefully that should start producing some stuff for us. Power's a little bit limited, isn't it? Hmm. 
Well, after a bit of faffing around, I've actually got it working now. We only actually needed four of these laser drills, and we are getting dash as well as copper, apparently. But it turns out these cables here do not play particularly nicely with the battery, so I've had to use the other energy cables. Not a problem, it's just that's why it wasn't working at first. And it is eating up that power quite quickly, so yeah, once we get a decent amount of dash, I guess we're going to have to make a massive solar array. And I think what I might do is actually bring up a couple of generators as well, just coal generators or something like that, because we've got lots of stuff we can burn and then it means we can get some energy in a hurry so far we've used about 15 to 20 percent of the power and we've got one piece of dash so yeah we're definitely gonna need to come up with a better power solution for up here so while this does its thing i guess it's only fair that we take the little moon rover out for a spin oh amazing look at this oh this is cool uh oh uh oh uh oh This time on FTB Skies, we return from the moon, develop new rockets in our space program, go to the end to take on a nightmare dragon, and escape the solar system forever to embark on a brand new modded adventure. <gasps> so following our incident on the moon at the end of last episode, I decided to stay up here for a while and let the mines run, and now I have thousands of dash, which is amazing. So let's head home, cook all this up, and make a start on advancing our space program to explore the wider universe. But first, let's replace our rover. There we go. And maybe we should make a spare as well. Now, the first thing I want to do today is to basically work my way towards getting to the end. And in the end, I'm assuming I can actually breathe air. So we're going to need to make ourselves some armor. And to be honest, we just don't really have much of anything at the moment. I've just been gallivanting around in my spacesuit mostly. But I've done a bit of research into the available armors. And what I want to make myself is some refined obsidian stuff. Although I don't think we have much obsidian. Let me go have a look. Does that work, or do I need to make obsidian another way? Doesn't appear to be doing anything. Oh, okay, so this actually still needs lava as well in order to produce obsidian, which kind of makes sense, I guess. Is there another way we can do it? So I have a plan to get refined obsidian. What we need to do is craft slime and blaze into magma creams, then craft those into magma blocks. We then wash the magma blocks to get obsidian, which we then crush to get obsidian dust. We throw the dust into a metallurgic infuser with some crushed diamond, and that gives us refined obsidian dust. We then throw that into an osmium compressor, and that gets us refined obsidian ingots. And the reason I've made so many is because we're going to want to enchant our armor as well. And usually that means I have to sort of make lots and lots of certain items and then keep combining them to make them super uber. So hopefully this is going to be enough. However, we've only got 14 levels and that means we need to make use of all of our XP over here. I think there's only really going to be one way to do this and make it nice and fast. And that's going to be to just eject loads of it onto the floor down here. Make sure my inventory is completely full and then use my auto clicker. Let's go. 287 levels should be enough to get started. Let's see what we can do. Well, I've completely emptied my XP vats and I've emptied the vault about four times over. Thankfully, we have this backup box, which did have about half a million in there. And now it's only got 140k. So yeah, we've done lots of enchanting, but look at this. I've got some amazing armor, which is, uh, it's got lots of enchants. I don't even know what they are, if I'm perfectly honest. But it's got lots of ones that I do know what they are and I know they're useful. But I've also made myself a Paxel, which is going to be good for the killing as well. And we've got a bow, which does lots of stuff and things. Well, I think we're as ready as we're ever going to be. Let's start our rocket and head off to the end. And I've even put the shaders on to make it a little bit brighter once we get there. Oh my, where are we landing? Well, this is a precarious landing position. Not sure how I feel about this. Jeez. Easy does it. Okay, then use our jetpack. Excellent. Right, let's go kill this dragon. Wait a minute, has that dragon got three heads?
trying to e me. I saw ya. Oh, you're back, back. Try to watch your mother explode. I feel bad for the little guy. We've done it. We've killed the three-headed demon dragon thing. That was horrific. And while we're here, I think it'll be rude not to actually go into the end and see what's going on. But we've got a couple of cities right away. What is that? I feel like I'm going to be better off traveling with Elytra and rockets for this. So let's just go have a little look around. And apart from this thing, it all looks fairly normal. What is this? Not entirely sure. Let's see what the loot's like. Protects from levitation while in inventory. Yes, please. Swim in the air. All right. Oh, there's some very cool stuff in here. And some stuff I don't really know what it is, but there's some cool stuff. Ender Firefly. There's like weird blue fish floating around. Okie dokie. There's a strange house and some trader llamas. Is there a trader here? There is. Why is there a trader here? Ooh, what have you got? Nothing of interest, really. And a void totem we got from that chest. I like that. I feel like that could come in handy. Thank you, Mr. Trader, sir. There's lots of weird just sort of floating one-off structures that are like the cities, but they're not the cities. I heard that. But overall, I have to say, there's not too much going on. And I don't think we actually need anything from the end, so I might just keep an eye out for a portal to get back, to be honest. But at least we know we've got access for the future. Well, I'm not going to lie, I'm struggling to find a gateway at the moment. Hopefully we'll come across one eventually. Oh, you spent ages looking for one and then two come along at once. Look at this. Right, well, that was fairly uneventful. Let's go home. Well, we made it home safe and sound. I've sorted out my inventory and we've got a dragon egg. We also picked up a few other random bits and bobs, but nothing too fancy. At least if it is fancy, I, I just don't really know what to do with it. So I'll put it into storage for now. But the dragon is dead and now we can start our mission to Mars. So the plan now is to go to Mars because I want to make myself a netherite spacesuit. But to do that, I need to get hold of some awesome and that can only be found on Mars. And I'm going to assume it's the same as the drill thing. Maybe I need to do that again. Let's have a quick look. Yep, it looks like it, except this time I need purple laser lenses. But before we do that, we're actually going to make our tier two rocket. And I have already crafted the parts, so I think we just need that. We need two of those. We need four of these, one of them. And then we need six of these. I think that's correct. And there we go. There's our tier two rocket. Awesome! Let's go place this down and see what it looks like. Now that looks much cooler than the first one. It's taller as well. But you know what I'm like, I'm a bit accident prone, so we should probably make a few more of them. There we go, plenty of tier two rockets floating about. Now to make all of the drill bits we're going to need. I've got all the drill bits ready, I've got power supplies, I've got my rover, and I've got building materials to build a shelter. I think we're ready to go to Mars. This rocket definitely looks cooler. Red planet, here we come. Oh, well, I accidentally got out of my thing. I'm not... Oh, jeez. Right, we're not a good start. My first thing blew up. If I don't use that, I'm going to die, but I'm also going to die from the cold. Oh, jeez. Right, okay. We've got oxygen. Oh, there's a structure. I kind of want to know what that is, but first, well, our rocket blew up. That is not ideal, but that's why we carry a spare. So I'm just going to put this down there so nothing bad can happen to it. And then we're going to go check out that building in our awesome Mars rover. Yeah, I love this thing. So let's find out what this is. Well, it's a pretty much empty building. There is a chest up there. We found water on Mars. And there's something up here as well. What is that? An Ostrom block. Ah, Ostrom, that's actually what we're here to find. But other than that, it just seems to be a building. So I think I'm going to turn this into my house. If we just seal off this bit here, stick a door down. I think the whole thing is airtight. So this should work an absolute treat. Look at that. So let's just get some power going. We'll use emeralds for fuel this time. And there we go. That appears to be working. But it's doing 3,000 blocks, which means we've got a leak somewhere. I'm not entirely sure where the leak is. I can't find anything, so I'm just going to wall in up here as well. There we go. We found the leak. It must be something to do with slabs. I guess slabs aren't good enough to keep the air in. Maybe? 
I don't know. The important thing is we have a base we can work from. So let's see if we can get something sorted out. Should we go do the solar panels first? Get power up and running a bit better. And we're going to stick a battery in to store any excess power as well, which already has 5 million in it. But not only that, I have this other battery, which we're going to use to kickstart the mining. That has got 50 million FE in it. The one we took to the moon... That one had 4 million. So if we quickly stick in our laser drill, we should start making lots and lots of stuff that we need. And probably some more stuff that we don't, to be honest. And I have to say, despite the incident on landing, this has actually worked out quite well for us. I've got the drill all set up and it's just started producing stuff. But I forgot to bring the speed upgrades with me. So these things are running very slow at the moment. And that means I need to head home, I guess, and go get some more. Because otherwise we're going to be here for absolutely ages. But everything else is working a treat. We've got everything linked up as it should be. But yeah, definitely need to speed this up. So let's jump in our car and go home. Now, if we apply all of these upgrades to each of these, it's going much quicker now. Excellent. So I guess I'm just going to be AFK here for a bit while we get this stuff. I should probably do a bit of reading about Mars as well. I've been AFK for an unreasonable amount of time, but look at this. We have loads of raw ostrum, and hopefully we'll never have to come back here again. Because I'll be honest, Mars is pretty boring. It looks pretty, but it's fairly boring. I did a little bit of reading in the book, and basically Mars only has one structure. And, and well, we found that straight off the bat. So I guess it's time for me to do some donuts and then get out of here. Home sweet home. And the first thing we need to do is to cook up all this dash and work towards making ourselves a lovely netherite space suit. This isn't Desh, this is Ostrom. Desh was the last one. So many Ostrom ingots. Now we need to turn a bunch of these into plates so we can make stuff and things. And the other thing I'm going to need is a full set of netherite armor. So we need to make diamond first and then upgrade that. Easy enough. And now we should be able to make ourselves a netherite space suit. How cool is this? Although it looks like I need a few more Desh plates as well. So let's just squish some of them. Well, this looks so much cooler than the last space suit. How awesome is this? And I guess that means we can retire the old spacesuit. We'll just put it back on the rack. You've served us well. So the next step is going to be to make ourselves a tier 3 rocket because I read the book while I was on Mars and we now need to go to Mercury and Venus to get some other resources which are eventually going to enable us to escape the solar system for good, which is of course our end goal here. So how do we do this? I guess we start by making a whole bunch of parts. And that should be all we need to be able to make a few rockets here. Look at this thing. Oh, this is going to be epic. Whoa, look at that. Oh, these rockets just keep getting better. Yes, that is very cool. I'm very curious to what the fourth one's going to look like now. It's going to be massive. So if we take a moment to have a quick look at our Ad Astra quest path here, you can see we're very nearly done. And what we need to do now is to go to Mercury or Venus, but we're actually going to go check out both, of course. And that is so we can get what we need to make a jet suit and a tier 4 rocket, which is an ore called Calorite by the looks of it. And then once we have our tier 4 rocket, as I say, we can fly to Proxima Centauri and start a whole new life. But as we're going to another new planet, that means we need to build some more oxygen generation type things, grab some more glass so we can build ourselves little houses, and of course we're going to need more laser drills. But to be honest, I think I'm just going to go to the moon and Mars and borrow those laser drills for now. Although actually on looking at this one, our best bet might be to actually just go digging, because if we get some of this ore, we can put it in our mechanical squeezer and look how many raw calorite we get for each ore block. So I'll tell you what, this time we're going to stock up on oxygen, we'll take loads of spare tanks with us, and we're not going to build a base on Venus or Mercury. We're just going to go digging around a little bit and see what we can find. This is going to be a much more exploratory focused mission. Let's get some oxygen. I'm sure 23 oxygen tanks will be enough. That feels like way too many, to be honest. We're just arriving on Venus and we appear to have structures already. I wonder what these are. The important thing is, we landed safely for like the first time ever. Well, I've just turned the shaders off to see what it looks like without them. And look at this. It looks very, very hostile. So I think we're going to play like this. And these guys look like they might be hostile as well. Let's go find out. Well, I've just shot a few of them and it turns out they're not actually hostile. So I feel kind of bad now. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. And I guess the question is, if I open a box, are they going to get angry then? Because these are clearly based on piglins. But do they act like piglins? Oh, yep, they do. They do. Yeah, they're not happy about that. Well, I guess we're killing the locals after all. But the thing is, the loot here is just not really useful to us, to be honest. Let's explore the rest of the building just in case. 
Nope, all the loot was rubbish. Let's go check out that other building we saw. And we'll travel there in style, of course. Well, there's a lot of piggos around here. Let's quickly deal with these. And for nothing. Nothing in the chest again. So the structures don't seem to hold much so far. I think what I might do is just do a little bit of digging. See if we can find anything else down here. Maybe a cave system? That'll be nice. Ah, although this is going to be a problem. I haven't bought my night vision goggles with me. So we may have to take a quick casual visit back to Earth. I think we'll go check out Mercury this time. Oh my, this looks hot. This is why we needed the netherite spacesuit, I guess. Well, I don't think I'm going to be cracking out my rover on this planet. This looks absolutely horrific. I'm having a look around, but I'll be honest, it doesn't really look like there's much of anything on this planet. Besides lava. Lots and lots of lava. Well, there really wasn't anything to do here, so let's head back to Venus and see if we can find some of this ore that we're after. We made it safely. So I think this time I might just go digging straight off the bat and see what we can find. Oh, well, we've just dropped into a cave, and look at this. Straight away, we've got some of the ore that we're after. In fact, we've got loads. This was definitely a better plan. And less lava. That's nice. Look at it. This stuff's all over the place. Marvellous. This is so much quicker than setting up drills. I then spent the next 20 minutes or so running around Venus's cave systems, collecting up as much of the ore as I could find. And some of these caves were absolutely humongous, so finding the ore was no trouble at all. It was just in the walls. And some of the caves were even big enough to drive around in, which was lovely. What? There's a thunderstorm on Venus? I kind of feel like this is something I want to see. Ow! Acid rain! Ow! The good news is we did manage to get almost two and a half stacks of the calorite ore, which means we're going to have, uh, well, over eight times that once we actually put it through the squeezer, which is going to be more than enough to build our tier four rocket, and more importantly, our jet suit. But it's going to have to wait until this is over and done with. And as long as we don't run out of oxygen in the meantime, we should be okay. It took an entire day and night, but the rain finally stopped, which meant we could leave the planet and head back to Earth. Although I'm not entirely sure where we're landing. Where are we? Aha, I see the airship. Oh, thank God for that, we've made it home. And just in the nick of time, because it's day 998, and I'm hoping to actually get to Proxima Centauri by day 1000, which means we've got a little bit of stuff and things we need to do with this ore. So we need to get this all processed up so we can make our jet suit and our tier four rockets. Oh, this is very exciting. So if we throw all this into our mechanical squeezer, we should just get loads and loads of calorite ore. Yeah, look at that, loads of it. We have so much calorite. All right, we'll definitely be able to do what we need to. Let's go get this cooked up. We'll get a bunch of this compressed into plates as well, because we're definitely going to need those. But I guess the question is, how do we actually make a jet suit here? So we are actually going to be upgrading our current netherite spacesuit by the looks of it. And for the actual jet suit bit itself, we need to add tanks. We need to add an engine. Oh, this is going to be fun. So I'm going to start making up some of these components. We should have everything we need, especially if we grab some of these and some of these. And now we can make our jet suit. Let's get this going. Well, it doesn't look any different. And it looks like I need to store energy in it. So how do I charge this up? Now, I'm fairly sure I've got a charger stashed around here somewhere. The question is, where did I put it? Oh, there we go. A charging station. Is this going to work? Yep, seems to be working. Excellent. And it looks like it's actually going to take all of the energy out of this thing. So yeah, we could be here for a moment. Well, this thing is taking absolutely forever, so I think what we're going to do is go build ourselves a rocket. Because we can build our tier 4 one now, or at least we should be able to. And I'm going to assume it's the same recipe as every other rocket so far. It would appear it is. Look at this thing. Right, let's go. And I'm expecting this to be absolutely massive. Yes, look at that. And we'll just put a tier 3 one here for comparison. Oof, that thing is huge. With our rocket fueled up and ready to go, we're just waiting on the jet suit now. And then we can depart this place. As much as I love it, of course. Okay, our jet suit is ready, so we should be able to fly now. So this is cool. It works a little bit like the other jetpacks. Although I'm flying like Iron Man. Oh, that is amazing. How cool do I look? And I think if I press sprint, I should fly forward as well. Oh my days, look at this. Woohoohoo, this is amazing. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, and dangerous. Cool and dangerous. But it's just coming up midday on day 999, which means we really need to get moving if we want to get off of here before day 1000. But before we head off, let's have one last look at our island and all that we've achieved here. Although we're leaving this world behind, this is by no means the end of our modded adventures. 
This mini-series has enabled me to narrow down exactly what mods I'm going to be using in a brand new long-term modded series, which will be starting in just a few weeks. I've spent the last six weeks or so creating a new mod pack for this adventure, basically seeking the perfect combination for a long-term create mod focus series, with a twist of course. So I guess all that's left to say is thanks so much for joining me on this mini-adventure, I hope you've all enjoyed it as much as I have, and I'll be back with more modded in no time at all. Cue the dramatic exit. Looks like there's actually nothing on this planet apart from desolate loneliness and weird little pink sheep things. 